The ship sailed into harbor after fifteen months at sea. The captain hit the tavern with his crew of fifty-three. After drinking up their pay, they staggered through the town. But all the inns and public houses turned the sailors down. The captain said, Fear not, me lads, you all can come with me. I live just round the corner, and you all can stay for free. But when the captain's wife awoke upon the break of day, they say that you could hear her wailing clear to Botany Bay. She said, there's semen all around the bed and semen on the floor. Semen in the bathroom and behind the closet door. There's semen in the fireplace and semen in the hall. The living room is carpeted with semen wall to wall. There's semen in the entryway and semen on the stair. And worst of all, there's even semen in me underwear. I'm running out of breath doing this song. There's some behind the larder and beneath the table too. I do believe your semen got into me Irish stew. There's semen here in front of me and semen in the rear. My god, there's even semen hanging from the chandelier. There's semen on the windowsill and semen in the yard. The semen even left a stain, a sa stain upon the St. Bernard. Although I am a patient wife, tis more than I can bear to wake up in the morning with your semen in my hair. I ne'er again do wish to see thee darken up my door. So clean up all your semen and come round my way no more. Fantastic. <laughs> Absolutely beautiful. I had to hold back Snigger then. That was brilliant. <laughs> do, you, do, you, do you need an inhale? I do, I do. I can't. I, I, I kind of tried to do that on one breath and I shouldn't have done it. Yeah. <laughs> that it's was not, the, cap, the Captain's Wife's Lament by Paul and Storm. It's not so easy, is it, the uh, singing the intro for the podcast, is it? I, I don't work well under pressure and singing is pressure. So uh, I'm just going to go take a break now and you guys can do a podcast without me. I need to recover here. So yeah, we'll get to recover. Get him the oxygen mask. <laughs> <laughs> I, I need I need an oxygen mask and a nice hot cup of tea. Well, seeing as you did my bit, I'll do your bit. Welcome okay. to the Butter Mash Podcast. We're going to talk about video games for somewhere in the region of two hours. Yeah, that, there yeah, that works. Yeah. You happy? <laughs> yeah, uh, you missed the video game accessories. We've never talked about video game accessories ever. I know, but I, I, I need I need a tagline. It is video games and video game accessories. It's I'm I'm, I'm riffing on um, King of the Hill. It's propane and propane accessories. We could all get steam controllers and talk about them. Uh, that probably will happen, or at least some of us will. I would imagine. I'll eventually. Yes, I'm absolutely getting one. Oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Okay, so yes, we will all get one. And we will have accessories to talk about. I, come I you can November buy them now. You can pre-order them. Yeah, you can pre-order them. You can't have them. We can't use them. We can't play with them. And we can't say, ooh, these are fun. Or these are crap. I, I was hoping they yeah. would send me one with the beta thing, but no. With the, what, you were hoping they were just going to send sign you? Up for, you can sign up for hardware betas. I, 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 I didn't get in. <laughs> oh, yeah. I think I recall signing up for that. But that was like, yeah, everybody on Steam signed up for this. And there's like 10 million or 50 million or something silly here. And chances are, yeah, you're not going to be one of the... 50 people or whatever they send it to. Unless they know your name. Yeah, that works. Or you could just be a developer and get in on one of the Steam dev days and stuff like that and just get them that way. Go um, make video games, it's the easy way to get them. I prefer his version that uh, Steam is like Cheers. Wh where, where everybody knows your name. They need to know your name? Okay. Yeah. Val Valve is Cheers, that, that's it. Yes, that's, that's obviously the missing connection here. With, cool. Ted with Ted Danson running operations. I have a feeling I'd be the mail carrier. I forget his name. I have never seen this, so this, this discussion is beyond me. Oh, shame. Woody Harrelson. Thank you. <laughs> Who was Norm? <laughs> I, don't I think know. Norm would be Tolkis. Who, who's Norm? Thank you. I'm glad I'm not the only one here. <laughs> oh, good. So, from video He's game too young to get the references. <laughs> so, it's, so it's gone from video game accessories to video games and cheers. Yes. Welcome to the Button Rush podcast. We're going to talk about video game, uh, video game accessories and cheers for two hours. <laughs> okay. We could talk about Bob Newhart. Oh, Again, I don't know who that is. Would you stop talking about the things that I don't know? <laughs> All I know is video games. Uh, I love Lucy. Oh, I love Lucy. Back in the day. <laughs> <laughs>
anyway do you, video do games. you two just want to go start a, like a old tv podcast of some sort Hey, it'd be tremendous. <laughs> I'm fine with this. <laughs> All Let's right, see you guys later. Me, Will, and Talkers are going to talk video games. <laughs> uh, so, back back on track. Yes, um, I'll finish off the bit that's usually ours. The song today was sung by John. Thank you. And John, I'm glad you chose that because... What, what did you say the general theme of that song is? Uh, semen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Nautical yes. terms. <laughs> Mm, semen belonging to which group of people? <laughs> um, men of the sea? They're not making this easy for me, you son of a... <laughs> I'm not. We're talking about pirates. Yes. Does that make it easier? Oh, yeah, that's like shoehorning it in, but yeah, yeah we're getting there. <laughs> uh, you know, I, I get sad sometimes, because I'd like to think that there's somewhere there's an event that celebrates the pirate that maybe you could go play a video game at. But alas... One does not exist. Well, that might be all about to change. What? That would be... I, th I, th I think our good friend Will knows something about that. Oh, barely anything. Surely. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that was I don't the... plan these things. That I was, was just passing the book just to see what you would say. <laughs> <laughs> that, was the equi that was the equivalent of hitting the Segway with a shovel. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was the equivalent of driving the Segway off a cliff into the River Wharf. It's gone. You've, lo <laughs> you've lost your chance to talk about it now. Well, it's gone. <laughs> it's gone. <laughs> nope, nothing's happening this month. Everybody go home. Nope. <laughs> Stay nothing special. There was nothing special whatsoever about September. See this, this, see, this kind of thing would have happened on the Retro TV podcast. <laughs> you, you, you would nail all the segues, is that what you do? <laughs> yep, it'd be wonderful. It'd be Gary <laughs> Coleman impressions and everything. Okay, fair enough. I probably wouldn't watch your podcast because I wouldn't understand anything you would be talking about at all. So, yeah. Uh, how about we actually do video games then? If if the, that segue has exploded in a train wreck, <laughs> yay! Talk talk us sounds in talk us di a dying of enthusiasm over there. He can't wait to talk about video <laughs> games. Uh, 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 uh. This is episode fifty, so we've got uh, we've got mul multiple peoples on this time, so it's going to be a fancy, fun filled with lots of people's podcast, and we may have new shinies later on in the show. So I look forward to that. New shinies? New shinies, new shinies, but that is for the second half. For now, we need to know what the heck you've been playing. Alzarath. What video you been games. Playing? Yes. Many, many video games. No, I've actually been playing Armello, which we... is kind of like a... Okay, yeah, we would you... kind of touched on that in the releases recently, and I was like, I've heard of this, but I don't know what it is. So tell me what it is. It's kind of like... Um, I actually have the other game. I think it's like... Uh, you broke up there. I didn't catch what you said there. I think it's called Talisman is the one that kind of seems similar to me, except it's... Yeah, uh, it's Talisman. Okay, Talisman. Have no, you ever played... That's something that rings a bell, but... It, it's basically like a board game. It's hex-based instead of square-based like Talisman was. But you move around the map, you perform objectives, you try to get your little missions and get your character stronger boost your stats, and then eventually kill the king to become the king. But the animation on it is pretty good. The gameplay, they're still adding to it. It's really good with friends. It's kind of boring by yourself. Other than that, I've just been playing old stuff. Old stuff? Final Fantasy. Oh, right. Like the Nintendo Final Fantasy. <laughs> Little oh, bit of Guild of right. Dungeon. Oh, okay. Just a little bit here and there. Killing Floor 2 just recently had some updates too, which I've been playing through with. Okay, cool. Anything shiny there? Oh, guy. That... Oh, you, um, you, you keep cutting out a little bit. I don't know if you need to push to talk more or shout louder at the mumbles. I don't know which. I think it might be my connection. All right. Having issues at the moment. But um, Killing Floor 2, basically, they've added the Firebug trait and the Demolitionist. Don't mean so a booms and fire. Too. Booms and fire. Okay. Well, that's pretty much what I've been playing. Okay. Cool. Well, that was a 
valuable two minute contribution to the podcast. Thank you for that. Does, does the <laughs> I like I imagine those are pretty good area effect classes for for zombie killing. I haven't, oh, I haven't yes. played this since it came out. It's it's getting a little better. The new maps are actually kind of confusing, but good. Yeah. I, I Catacombs like, lives up. Yeah. I, I like the way that the the maps were structured. There was never one very safe place in the map. Yeah, they've kept that going really good. Sure. And the aesthetic on the catacombs is skulls and stuff that you'd expect from catacomb. Yeah. Do you get lost a lot? Or do you know the map yes. really well by now? I get, I get <laughs> lost in the catacombs. Excellent. That's the way it should be. <laughs> that seems like the worst place you could possibly get stuck with zombies coming from. <laughs> What? No, I think the catacombs would probably be a safe place, right? Because everyone the, knows already a skeleton. The final boss is easy in the catacombs. Have, for some have reason. They, have they added any new bosses, or is it still the, the doctor? It's, it's still just the doctor. Oh, okay. He's really hard anyway. But in the catacombs, there's a lot of corners you can duck around, so he doesn't really oh, no, have no. an easy way to get at you. I see. But you, in turn, don't have an easy way to get him. That's why you throw grenades behind you. Uh, <laughs> and he has yeah, so I need to get big back of into a that game. I did like it. He projects his attacks so far that you can get around a corner before he can launch them too. It, I like this game for exactly the same reason that I love Dirty Bomb. It, the more or less very similar games. Except yeah, I've been playing a lot of Dirty Bomb too. I, oh, but I love it. A couple weeks ago. I, I haven't played it since uh, they added the new character. I forget his name. The, the sniper? The, smoke, the guy with the smoke bombs. Yep. Yeah. Let's yeah, he's kind of where I stopped. I'm not even aware of a guy with smoke bombs. I'm kind of out of the loop on the whole dirty bomb. Uh, he looks like uh, Metal Gear Solid's yeah. Solid Snake. Right. Like okay. the old version. Like the old guy. The old guy. Uh, I'm going to have to like find like the dirty bomb wiki or something and find out information. Yeah, he like throws smoke bombs and he can see in the smoke bombs. Did you have okay. like a machete or something? I forget what his melee weapon is, but he's technically a sniper. Go by his guns. Yeah. Yep. I like that. That, that could be really good when used with the uh, the stealthy ninja character. That I also forget the name of. Is this red eye you're talking about? Yes. He yeah. looks like Bill from Left 4 Dead. Yeah, he does kind of <laughs> look like that too. Except, except for the thing on his eye. He's got the beret, he's got the beard. He's <laughs> Yeah, he's basically Bill. I always just end up playing Proxy on... Dirty yeah, Bomb, I though. love Proxy. She's my favorite. He's uh, a little bit underpowered really... in certain matchups, but... Yeah, you can't really beat laying proximity mines on objectives. <laughs> especially, when you, especially when you can hide them so easily. Another fun thing to do is throw the proximity mine in their general direction and then shoot it with your shotgun. Oh, do they, sh do they explode when they shoot? Yeah, they oh, will explode they from do. your shotgun blast. So it's like a grenade, do. too, and it deals a lot of damage. I like that. I never even thought to do that. And if I'm going to die, I'll just start spamming proximity mines <laughs> on myself. Yeah. Uh, I, think I'm, I think maybe I just quit because I was kind of not very good at it. <laughs> Oh, I suck at it, I, too. I, I was going to say, I, I stepped on way too many proximity mines. I was like, god damn it. My, oh, my I, kill count matches my death count now, so I, I consider that a personal win. Okay. Usually I kill more than I die, unless I'm trying to commentate, and then I die every five seconds. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was always medic, so I died more than I killed, but yeah, which is to be expected, but you know. There's a certain, certain point at which your KD is so low, you're like, this is... Less satisfying than I would like this game to be. Yeah. <laughs> oh, speaking of medics, back on Killing Floor 2, that... Why why do I always end up with the highest heal and the highest kill count? With medic. <clears throat> really weird. Well, the healing probably speaks for itself if you're a medic. Yeah. <laughs> but they, they now have little badges for, like, whoever has the most kills, most heals, and stuff like that, and I always end up with, like... Blowing people away in the kill counts and heal counts. And I can't do that with any other class. Can't get that many kills. Hmm. Okay, fair enough. He gets overpowered. 
Alrighty. Well, nothing coming then, presumably. Hopefully. Surely if you're playing it, you wouldn't be hoping for that. But, okay. To each yeah, I would rather have to be balanced, because it's, it's a PvE game. It's not... You're not playing against other players. Yeah, but you've got to be the top, though. you got to get those most <laughs> kills. I'd rather it? just not... It's, the, it's that old pay, uh, Penny Arcade comment. It's like, it may, be, it may be a cooperative game, but I'm winning. <laughs> <laughs> you can I still can win. That. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Okay. Anything else? Not really. Just the same old, same old. Same old, same old. Okay. I'm going to poke Tolka Hulka. And, and one game I can't talk about. Uh, okay. Well, um, we, we won't talk about that then. Uh, Tolka Hulka can wake up and come hello, back to life. Hello. Hello. Arise from the dead, what, my minion. What is this world? I'm going to start Remind. shoving coffee through the internet, Adam. I'm, I'm asleep. I bonk. <clears throat> Hearthstone. Yeah, Hearthstone. Tavern Brawl. <laughs> happened. Um, it was the first turn you get five, one mana, the second turn you have three, third turn you have five, so on, so on. So it's like it's like uh, the the same thing as the earlier one where you start out at ten mana, only um, it's less than the uh, one turn kill aggro murloc tax, which is fun. And yeah, that was meh, fun, I guess, ish, I guess. Um, there, someone on the subreddit made an interesting uh, point about how uh, Hearthstone is a casual game. Like, it's very clearly like marketed to casual people and not to the hardcore at all. I think that the developers were actually surprised when the competitive scene, you know, developed. But it's like, you know, it's such a casual game. You know, as you can see, like, oh, there's the, the RNG cards, or mm -hmm. your unstable portals or whatever. It's all RNG. The cards that yet, I like, basically, you mean. Yeah. But then, like, there's the, you know, and, there, and then so on the casual. other hand, there's the, you know, the, the hardcore competitive world with, like, multiple $200,000 prize pool tournament thingies. But the, uh, the interesting thing about the game, like, if you want to be at any way competitive in it, you have to, uh, you know, be either like me and play the game for two years or spend, like, $300 in it, which is obviously not a casual game. So... I, I I thought that was pretty interesting, you know, it's, it's a game that is marketed very heavily towards the casual half of things, but yet the price point is too high for the casual sort of people to consider. I think it's that, interesting that you denote whether a game is hardcore or not by how much people spend on it, because I don't, I personally, I wouldn't, I wouldn't agree with that. I don't think how much it encourages you to spend on it is necessarily a factor in that. There's I, a lot I mean, of games that would encourage you to spend I mean, ridiculous amounts of money like, that if definitely aren't hardcore. Like if, if you're, it's just like the sort of thing where like you're on your your mobile phone and you're on the subway or whatever, and you just want to beat out a couple of Hearthstone games on your way to work. You know, like you're a casual player. Like, if you want to have good meta decks, then you need you know three thousand three hundred dollars. Maybe you don't care about that. Maybe you just are happy playing with like Boulder Fist Ogres or whatever. But I think a lot of people aren't. So like I, I, I feel like it would be. I don't know, I just, I just thought that was a very interesting point that was made, and yeah, that's sort of like a lot of the, the problems around Hearthstone, that it's sort of trying to cater to both audiences, and yet it's, I don't know, it's, it's, it's strange. But yes, um, another word, in, in other news in the meta, um, Secret Paladin has continued to be on top, because no one has figured out how to counter it yet. Um, it is kind of silly. Yeah, um... But what what that does mean is that it's a uh, paladin it naturally does a very well against a uh, warrior, because the hero power beats the warrior's hero power. You know, you make a dude and they armor up, and then you take out their armor and stuff. So, paladin does well against warrior, and that has basically like for the first three days off uh, TGT, control warriors were just like ten control warrior games in a row, I think. But now it's just um, it's all life is paladin, man, and then hunters running flare to beat the paladins, and etc, etc, etc. So, that means that because Control Warrior isn't around, I was able to play my Freeze Mage. Um, and that didn't work out well at first, because people were playing Kazan Mystic, but then I think eventually people realized that Kazan Mystic is actually terrible against Secret Paladin, because what like... What does that card do? Because I don't know that one. A 4-3 for 3, with the text, steal a secret from your opponent and put it onto yourself, like... Okay. So... So like it's, it's I mean, like that, it's, that that actually kind of answers the second question I was going to have, which was: Is there any other card in the game other than flare, which is used for countering um, traps in any way? 
Yep, and that would that, that's it. It's a uh, right. flare. Is that and, it? Just those two cards. Yeah. I mean, I suppose you could like counter spell for it because it spells or something. But the, yeah, those are the two big cards. But like, um, generally speaking, almost all the secrets are worth like half a mana because they're all terrible. So it's, it's like having like a basically it's like having a five four for four sort of ish. I might say. And that's not very good. So yeah, Kaelin Mystic is, is not actually good against... I mean, against Mage is insane. That's like a, a six-mana swing. But against uh, Paladin, it's not so much. So people start up playing Kazan, so I gotta play my Freeze Mage. So more power me. Um, yeah, I've been... As you can hear, I've been very ill all this weekend, though I haven't done much in the way of recording. I did some more Civ Five, and um, there was the... Uh, I, I, I took the Poland capital... And the, the Chinese came down and killed all my guys, and I was sad about that. I played Spiral Knights because apparently we're doing Yay. like a hashtag team suicide show or something. And I, I liked Spiral Knights; it was it was fun. I was a lot of kiting, and I got a kitten pet thingy, and I got rank three squire, and I was just like pew pewing people with my gun. And then you can like hold down the sword, charge at the sword, and then go. There's like it's it, it, it was fun. Um, yeah, it's the, 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 the choices between, there's like, there's a, uh, uh, there's a puppy for, like, if you go headlong, and then, like, that, that puppy does, like, a lot of, like, fiery stuff and stuff, and then there's, like, a deception one that, like, fires quills, then there's my kitten that, like, does a lot of healing, and I actually thought the other tool looked cooler, but Talkers. I, I Talkers. generally like to heal people, even though I, like, in all my games I ever play, I always like play solo because I hate everyone. Talk, I can, I, can, I, can, I, can I just say how adorable it is that you're explaining Spiral Knights to my <laughs> audience? <laughs> oh dear. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, they, they, they love Spiral Knights, I guess. Yay, Spiral Knights. And, um, yeah, but I, I just like healing, you know, in, in, in games I always like to be the healer in the game, even though I never play multiplayer or anything, it's just when those few times when I do, I like to be healer, so that's fun. I guess I'm healing now, or something. There's a lot of, like, alchemy stuff that I didn't quite get, and a lot of, like, forging stuff that I didn't quite get, I was just like, I don't know, it was just like, I just like, apparently you get, like, heat to upgrade stuff, so... Yeah, it's overcomplicated. It's way overcomplicated. Yeah, it's it's not new user friendly at all anymore. Yeah, yeah. I, I just saw a button called Forge, and I pressed the button called Forge. So now I have like level four gear or something. So yeah, press the button called Forge. I'm also, Minecraft happened. Uh, yeah, I have Michael. Yes. Michael, I'm afraid I have bad news for you. Oh dear God, no. The um, horse named Michael that was inside the hashtag Team Suicide Den. I'm afraid is no longer with us. Let us have a moment of silence for Michael the horse that was overlooked by Maroka in his first video, but then was one day found, and for such a short time was, was valued as a part of hashtag Team Suicide. Okay, moment of silence done. <laughs> but I, but I, I, <laughs> That's all you get. But, but I hope you, hey. you you thought it had a very introspective moment. How does that make you feel, Michael? I'm generally going to give that a minute silence, then. Oh, okay. I was wondering um, how long we were going to give it. <laughs> um, well, it, it, it was a decent silence. You know, that was a few seconds. You know, it's relative. So, um, I, I suppose, Michael, I'll let you give a eulogy. Uh, 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 oh <laughs> now you put um, him on the I'll spot. Let, <laughs> I'll, I'll let Maroka give a eulogy. Uh, no, no. I, I'll power through. Yeah. Okay. You're uh, your descendant. I never met my equivalent of a Minecraft horse, and, but yet somehow I feel he has touched the lives of well, me, because he was named after me. Oh, no. oh God. No, I'm sorry. I can't do it. <laughs> okay, He's too um, emotional. i got to go, man. I'm sorry. Maroka, Maroka, would you like to finish this eulogy? Tell tell the people about the first time you saw Michael. My, Michael the horse was was a beautiful horse. It was a magnificent white stallion, an incredible beast that would inspire the lives of many men. All that would look upon this magnificent steed would be inspired to go forth and oh, eyes. <laughs> play Minecraft. He was a bastard. <laughs> he owed me money. <laughs> But, but yes, and Maroka was the one 
who found that he was no longer with us, who found that he had departed into the lands beyond. You so, killed him! <laughs> so, so, I needed glue! Oh, the the horror, Maroka, the horror. I remember that was during the uh, the first hashtag, hashtag Team Suicide livestream, wasn't it? When he went down, it was the hashtag, hashtag Team Suicide Den, and our sorrow or lamentation was broadcast to the millions of eager viewers whose eagerness so quickly turned to despair and misery. Oh, the sadness. The may, sorrow. may hear a dear many surfaces together. <laughs> yes, <laughs> alas. Um, also, we had another Minecraft thing, and Maroka stole my quartz, so I'm mad about that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm. 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 The retribution. I, I, not so much. I, I just saw it and I was like, I know that's Torkus's, is, and I'm taking it. <laughs> it's I, I'm like quartz man. I'm just. You're I'm, a skill and a thief. <laughs> I'm more. I'm more filled with regret that I later realized that what I should have done is taken the quartz and replaced it with a redstone block. <laughs> But it's quartz! And redstone is more important. Yeah. So, yes, I don't think we're at any kind of liberty to go into any more details about that, but hey. No, I just wanted the people to know that you stole from me, you nicked my quartz, and I was mad and sad. Hashtag well, Team Suicide. What do you expect from a horse killer? <laughs> I didn't kill him, he was already dead. I just made him into glue. Oh yeah, he was already dead, officer. <laughs> Well, it's just like in Party Hard. If nobody saw it, it didn't happen. <laughs> as long as the body goes into the dumpster, it's all good in the end. <laughs> oh, God. Yeah. <laughs> I've had no more silliness in Party Hard. I'm disappointed. I know they added, like, a UFO to it. The aliens, like, just turn up in the middle of a party for some reason at some point. I don't know where that is, and I want to see it happen, but... Well, that's how all good parties, you know, it's a good party. Yeah, when you attract party goers from other planets. Yeah, you've thrown a pretty good one. You've done all right. There was a, there was one of the random phone events where you ring the phone and see what happens. Just like it just added a bunch more party goers. Just a van turned up and just everybody in, in fancy dress costume just turned up and it was like, great. Now I've got like ten more people to kill. <laughs> okay, that just made the level harder. Great, wonderful. So that was fun. Still killed them all. I can't remember if I did. I probably did. I may have failed. Who knows? I think you need counselling at this stage, John. No, no, I'm good. I'm good. I've, uh, according to my Steam achievements, only killed 700 and some people so far. I have not yet hit the achievement for 1,000. <laughs> okay, when you hit 1,000, then will you promise me you'll see someone? Uh, I will see a man about a knife. That's good enough. Cool. Alrighty, um, yeah, uh, Will or Michael, you want to step up to the plate? Go on then, I, I, I delved into an early access game this week. Dun dun dun. Dun dun dun, I took a, took a risk on a nice cheap game called Layers of Fear. Oh, and and was, it, I was rewarded. Alright. Tenfold, it's only kind of maybe a third finish at the moment, and I, I, I got through that in about... Uh, about an hour and forty minutes. But my God, it's it's beautiful. I well, it's layered. Well, what do you expect? <laughs> th this game was marketed specifically at me. Nobody else need bother to play this. This is this is just solely targeted at me. Surely. Well, when I Google it, one of the first things that pops up is PewDiePie's face. Oh God. <laughs> it's ruined. <laughs> it's ruined forever. It does have overwhelmingly positive reviews on Steam, mind it's, you. Like it, it's gorgeous, and it's so, like it's so good at building like the suspense and uh, it's, visually, it's just stunning. It's it's kind of uh, for for any other horror fans that haven't played this, is very much like a combination of. Uh, Amnesia, Dark Descent, and the latter Silent Hill games, but this is kind of like first person, you won't encounter anybody throughout this game. So you are completely alone, there's no aliens to kill you, there's no... There are a few ghosts, but it's not, it's not just jump scare, it's all very psychological. Love it. Okay, it sounds... 
well, I don't know. I, it sounds more like the kind of thing I would appreciate in a horror game than maybe. It's, I'm not, I'm not very appreciative of horror games, but it sounds more like something I'd prefer than just all jump scare. I'll tell you what, it plays, it plays very much like uh, the Stanley Parable. Oh, right. So you walk, you walk into one room, you can find that the door's locked, you'll turn around, go into another room, and it will be a completely different corridor. And that's oh, okay. most of most of how the game plays. So Stanley the Stanley Parable as a horror game. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but, with, but with very little that's narration. A sales pitch. Yeah, I, I'd buy it. There's, there's very little dialogue. Uh, it's mostly your own mad ramblings. Uh, whenever you find an object, there's hardly any kind of objects to gather. There's, I think, I found two keys and a few pieces that you do to complete a stage in the game. Oh, I cannot wait for this to be finished. As one of the one of the um, rec- curator recommendations is like it, it's like if Hieronymus Bosch painted still life, but it's a game. Mm, uh, yes, and it's, I don't know. It's, it's weird. It's just a name that's come up like twice in recent weeks. I'm wondering if I've like looked at this before and skipped over it or something. Someone else compared a game to Hieronymus Bosch, and I was like, I've never heard of that. And then I looked and I was like, oh, that's really fucking weird. If you if you like your art history. And you like your horror like I do. Like this is a brilliant game. Okay. There's like, a, not it's... things I'm particularly into, but <laughs> <laughs> you won't coof, man. You. I know. No. It's it's got lots of paintings in it that I I know quite a lot of them are famous. There's some that I'd never even heard of. Has it got the uh, screaming man that kind of thing? No, no. It's very it's very Renaissance, uh, uh, and also, it, but it, it mixes in impressionism. Like this guy who who was really talented at painting, did loads of Renaissance style paintings, and that made him famous. But then uh, something unbeknownst has turned him mad, and he's gone into kind of an, an impressionist Jackson Pollock kind of phase, and nobody likes him anymore, and that's turned him even more mad. Something about kidnapping his own daughter uh, after she's been taken into care and stuff. And there's a very sinister undertone of the objects that you're gathering are human body parts that you mix into your paints. So, oh, that's lovely. <laughs> I don't know if it's the wife or the child yet, but we'll see. Okay, well, that's all charming. It's cheery. Yeah. I well, loved it. Well, it's certainly been well received so far, which is mm. odd for a game that you say is on like thirty percent complete. Like I've gathered, I've gathered half the objects, but I assume there's more to it than that. I hope there's more to it than that, considering how how well polished this game is already. Fair enough. So the uh, as the devs kind of. Do you know much about their early access thing at the moment? Is like, are they updating it like weekly? Are they heavily involved in updating? Do they have they said what they want to do with it? I haven't even looked. This is something they just picked up yesterday. Okay, and oh, I believe it's enough. only been out for two weeks. Well, that's long enough for them to sort of set out mm. a roadmap and kind of give an indication of things. I'd hope so. I will definitely look into it. I'm just kind of reading through there. They're saying, uh, they are saying they want two to three months to gather community ideas and implement them into the game. According to their early access. Oh. Here's why you should buy our game bit. Well, it wasn't very expensive. I can't remember how much I paid for it. but uh, Looking at 6 on Steam at the minute. It is not a lot for such a... Like... I, I can't even compare this game to anything else I've played because it looks so good. Okay. It looks better than Alien Isolation, and I was very impressed with that. <laughs> okay, right, fair enough. It's it's like it's uh, it's it's set in a mansion, I think, in the fifties, somewhere around there. Okay, very good. Well, it's it's highly recommended then. Okay. Mm, Will very likes good. it. I Will like it a lot. It. <laughs> well, like I said, as do 97% of 972 people on Steam. There we go. Then. That's uh, I can't quite, be wrong. That's quite a telling statistic. <laughs> it's doing okay for itself, yeah. It's yeah. Good. And I've also played Sky Saga. 
Hooray! Uh, I think I can talk hour. about it. Yay! Because I played yeah, about Alpha four hours. Five. Yeah. Yeah, it's Alpha Five now, so stuff looks different. Stuff Icon looks. Icons are yeah. all different. Uh, well, um, yeah, they've. I mean, they tweaked it a couple of times in Alpha Four, so I guess some of that will be stuff that has already changed that you didn't uh, see. Although yeah. some some of, some of it is new, some of it was tweaked in Four Point Five. Uh, but if you skipped out on the whole Four thing, mm. which you did, yeah, there'll yeah. be a lot of a lot of changes to take in someone coming back like that. Yeah. Yeah, I kind of had to force myself to come back. I, 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 but I feel enough now has has changed for me to to become engrossed in it again. Yeah, I don't know. I kind of I kind of had to make myself pick it up as well because it's been mm. out a few days, and I'd, I, I mean, I guess I just had a lot of other stuff that I, I'd had, I'd, I'd kind of given myself two critique videos to do last week, so I was kind of like sinking a lot of time into those to actually get ready to make those videos. So I was like, I know Sky Saga's out, but other stuff, I kind of need to do this now, and mm. I'll get to Sky Saga. And because I'd, I'd, because I've just let it drop for like a month, it was what it was kind of one of those on the back burner. It's kind of, eh, I'll get back to it. And then when then when yeah. I fire it up, I'm like, oh, okay, I'm hooked again. <laughs> See, I, so, uh, unfortunately, I'm not hooked, and I'm kind of disappointed that because oh, right. I don't have all my old stuff. I've got to get all that again. And... I don't mind that. I, I mean, I, I think, that, I think my big part of why I got bored of it was because I had everything I could ever possibly want. I had 250 crims a night for crying out loud. Admittedly, the devs kind of just dropped it, and I took it. But hey, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was like, I could make pretty much if not every weapon pretty much every if not every weapon in the game i had like damn near every weapon and the materials to make it out of almost any material i could choose to make it from with the possible exception of like uh, abyssium i think i uh, liked which, being on top though i liked having all all the everythings all the everything yeah um I don't know. It wears the it wears pretty thin pretty quickly, and I'm like, I, I'd, I'd rather kind of re-earn stuff. I don't mind re-earning mm. stuff just to have that sense of progression again, working my way back up. And of I, course, I, now that now they've got lots of ways to actually be on top as well now, which they weren't before. You can now compete with everybody over the things. Uh, they got the. You can now publish your house once you built a house and people can vote on it and then you go onto a leaderboards and i don't know how i mean did you see the did you see the signposts around the uh, around the community hub which ones the, ones the ones that had other players sort of you know houses on them no there were lots of adverts on signs all of it. it's like why don't you visit so and so's house so and so has built this castle go check it out so and so has built a tree house here's this person's tree house so and so has built a maze go check out this maze and i'm like yeah how are these in the wait are these are these like have they have they generated these are these like algorithm alg uh, words algorithmically mm -hmm. generated have they have they does the game just like pull people's top things but then there's like no the screenshots of their houses in there so presumably the devs must be going through people's builds and finding cool stuff and then saying hey these people are what we currently think are some of the best stuff in the game and showing it off so i don't know it's kind of weird a little bit. I don't know. I would have thought, I, given the nature of the game, that they would kind of do it algorithmically somehow, yeah. but I don't know. I get, I get the impression that this time they're, they're really trying to get everybody to go to everybody else's island. Yes, they were, They would definitely. That's definitely trying to encourage social interaction because now you can yeah. follow people as well, which, yeah. uh, especially from someone who does YouTube, that's a nice thing to have because... You know, there's the whole, mm. everybody wants to add you and you can't add everybody because that's just ridiculous. Mm -hmm. uh, now they can just follow you instead, which means that they can, I guess, visit your house, I suppose, probably is what they can do with that. I if, guess. If I open up my house to be visited. Other than that, I don't know what else that allows them to do. What I, I'm not sure what else that would let anyone do. I do have a follower for some reason. I don't know. Someone Someone followed me and I'm like... I don't know who you are. I, I, are you a? I mean, I haven't actually got my at this point. At this point in time, I haven't actually got my Sky Saga Alpha Five video up yet. So it's clear. I, I don't know whether it's someone who's like, yeah, I'm a fan of your Sky Saga videos, or whether it's just some random has just followed me for some reason. Well, I, I, I know. I opened up my tab, and I've, I've got three followers. I don't know how that happened. 
I know it automatically adds friends as followers, but then right. I've got an actor. Uh, then I have one follower, follower who's like just a follower, I guess. Okay. Which is just kind of odd. So yeah, I've got like twenty friends, I think. Some of those are people who've just added me, and I've just gone. Eh, I don't know who you are, but this is probably from YouTube. Why not? I'll add you. And some people I do know. There's a, there's a few of the more prolific PVPers added me as friends when I was on my rampage days. Uh, I think there are a few people like, Wow, you have stabbed a lot of people in the face today. I would like to be friends with you. <laughs> it, it is a talent I have, apparently. Stabbing people in the face. Making friends since 1999. Best yep. place to stab people. Yeah, you don't want to stab them in the uh, foot. Me. What survive? <laughs> uh, people don't appreciate, appreciate it too much when you stab them in the back. No, you like to see it coming. <laughs> yeah. So... Yay! Face stab friends, and oh yeah, now there's that. Uh, there's the also the community quest, which is oh yeah, grindy yeah. as shit, but um, has some nice rewards. It's there's no there's a I get I guess it's probably going to be weekly. I imagine it's a weekly thing that they're going to be running. Is now it's like over the course of the next few days, everybody in the game has to coll collaboratively work together to make to collect. In this particular instance, for this week, 200,000 bones in the game. And, yeah, you're just going around smashing up all the bones that you can find in dungeons and stuff and taking them and, like, here's 200 bones for you. And, yeah, there's, like, a leaderboard for it and the top player gets a title for themselves and top 5% get a skull and crossbones, which obviously I need in my life <laughs> next to their name. Um... And then the top 10% get a recipe, which I got from randomly leveling up yesterday. So <laughs> I was like, well, don't need that reward anymore. <laughs> just kind of one of the unfortunate nature of just the, the random loot systems, I suppose. So, yeah, that was kind of weird. And it's just like, hmm, there's this prestigious 10%, top 10% of all the players get the, it was like a roof shingle tile thing. And there was like, ah, you leveled up. Here's a roof shingle tile. And I'm like... <laughs> Oh, right then? Sure. Okay. Fine. Uh, so, yeah, I'm going to I'm gonna have to grind that some more because I want that. I just need a skull and crossbones by my name. Mostly is why I need that. I'll, I'll casually... I'll casually just, you know, grind bones when I, when I see them. I won't go out of my way for this one. Well, the personal reward cap is, uh, it kind of, the interface implies like there would be more rewards, but uh, the actual rewards, if you're not like one of the top, top players, everything that you can possibly get from this event, you will get by handing in 250. If you, if you get 250, uh, that's it. That's everything. You're done. And given that each bone that you break uh, rewards two bones, uh, it's, not, it's not that hard to get at all, to be fair. I, I got 70 in one run. Yeah, exactly. I mean, I, I'm I'm easily getting a hundred plus if you're really going out your way. Oh if yeah, you got, definitely. I kind of thought at first that like the skeletons, uh, skeleton dungeons would be like, oh, these are going to be superb places to get bones. They really don't seem to be that good. Uh, I think I don't know. For, forest levels are pretty good. I mean, it's just like going through a cave, like any cave. There's Tons of bones, yeah. and they're good. I imagine the Ember Wolf lair is just littered with yeah. bones. If you went to do an Ember Wolf lair, that would be great. Um, and yeah, most uh, there's a few dotted around the deserts, I suppose. Um, some a good number of dungeons have plenty, just because they're old, dusty, forgotten places, I suppose. Um, yeah, going and killing lots of skeletons doesn't reward you with anywhere near as much as <laughs> doing a lot of other stuff, which is really weird. I was like, if I slaughtered skeletons, I will have lots of bones. No, that's not how it works, huh? Strange. So yeah, I'm gonna be getting. I haven't, I haven't actually had any jungle levels yet, but I need to get into it big time to actually get some jungle stuff. Is, is there a jungle? Like, I, I don't know. Is there a difference between forest and jungle now? Jungles have dinosaurs in. What? Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> Okay, yeah, I, 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 I need a jungle level now. Yeah, so like, well, I haven't seen one, so all, I've, all I know is what, like screenshots they put out on social media and stuff. Yeah. So, I, like I say, I haven't seen a jungle level, so I kind of like, I need to get, get into things to find what's going on in there. I imagine they'll have lots of interesting new adventures and stuff in there that will be new structures and things. 
I mean, I, I mean, already the first adventure I did, they'd like... I don't know whether they redesigned the kind of the forest ruinsy grove thing, or if this is like an entirely new forest ruinsy grove thing, but... Uh, the first forest ruinsy grove thing I got, it was like, suddenly it's like, oh, this is a huge, massive, imposing structure now, and there are vines growing all over it, and it now has a basement full of wolves, which it, previously it was just kind of, here's a few rocks and half a pillar and a keystone exit and a chest full of stuff, and there's like two guards. They were, ne they were never particularly impressive ruins. <laughs> now, now they kind of are. So, I like that. I like they've done things up. Cool. Alright, um, since I haven't delved too far into Sky Saga, I don't have much more to say about that. Uh, I don't think there is a whole lot more to say at this moment. No. I'm more thinking I need to ask Michael what he's been playing, because he hasn't, ha he hasn't talked to us for several weeks about what he's been playing. Yeah, it's not been a lot. <laughs> God damn it. You had weeks, man. You've had weeks to play things. I've been mostly on the uh, Football Manager. which Of course is, you have. But I don't really want to talk too much about it, because it's ended quite badly. Come on, you got to tell us now. I have been sacked. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for taking so much joy in that. <laughs> oh, oh dear. It ended badly. How did that happen? Come on, what, what were the circumstances here? Well, I think I'm they, guessing scandal. I think they judged me harshly. It was corruption. <laughs> corruption in the FIFA. I think they judged me harshly. I mean, I won four games. Out of 36. Out of? Out of 36. Like cocaine and hookers. <laughs> Oh, 36? I mean, that's not bad, is it? Uh, it's... Which team were you? Uh, I was Leeds. Well, there you go. Probably, it's probably better than Leeds do in real life, I'm sure. <laughs> it's about on par, I'd say. <laughs> okay. No, it was... It was just time. Mutual parting of the ways. Right. <laughs> Need to move on and find a new team. Yeah. Um, I've mostly been playing card games as... Uh, You'll know because you joined me in a couple of them a couple of weeks ago. Oh uh, yeah, we we touched on these. Um, yeah, tell tell us your perspective of things. Well, uh, you mentioned stack the bones, I'm assuming. Uh oh yeah, stack the bones was an exhilarating thrill ride that was a bit weird. Um, it was just like oddly shaped Jenga. It was Jenga with all the bits of bone shaped and you had to balance the skull on top and if you accidentally knocked the skull off top off the top you didn't lose but you had to put a bone back into the stack yeah but i thought it was reasonably fun for a party game i i, I think they overcomplicated what was originally a very simple and compelling experience in and of itself jenga works they made it jenga with awkward blocks and silly rules that are unnecessarily complicated that turn into this weird kind of, oh, no, now you've got to do a move backwards. And it's like, what? Why? It's Jenga, for crying out loud. Super weird Jenga. Oh, uh, well. We also... I've also played Coop a couple of times. Coop? Uh, Coop. Coop. Not like one flu. No, never mind, I won't make that joke. Is it a, is it a chicken coop, is it? No, oh, you son of a... No. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was... It's kind oh, of are you a... talking about a coup? A Is coup. that what you're talking about? That's the one, yes. A coup. <laughs> you don't pronounce the P. Yes, I know that now. Thank you. <laughs> oh, dear. No. Which one was coup? Did I play coup or is this another thing? No, it's the one where you're basically trying to assassinate the other players. Oh, is that one? Right. Yes, and I remember that you're one. You're trying now. to be the... Usually it's about, about up to four to six players and you're trying to be the last player left. So you can basically be dukes or assassins or captains. And basically that controls how much money's in the game and basically the aim is it's a bit there's a lot of bluff in the game. It's yeah, it's another one of those uh backstabbery town of Salem y kind of thing to put into a context that I feel our friends and audience might recognise. Yeah. yeah. Essentially if you think somebody's doing something that they're not allowed to do with in the re realms of their character, you can call them out on that, but if you get that incorrect then you lose a character. So it's like a last man standing out of that. Yeah, interesting experiences. It's another way to get that similar kind of gameplay with a small group and no need for a DM in a similar way to um, Avalon or Resistance yeah. or Resistance Avalon, whichever. They're all the same bloody thing. Did, uh, you, did you touch upon Bucket of Doom? Uh, I don't believe I did. It's... Basically, Cards Against Humanity. Yeah, essentially. It's Cards Against Humanity, but it's in a bright pink bucket. 
Right. Which is its main selling point. <laughs> That's yeah. I I, I, I saw um, the co-optional guys played it at CoxCon, and they played it immediately after Cards Against Humanity, and they might as well have just played two games of Cards Against Humanity. Really, <laughs> it was like okay, this this is still the same thing. Yeah, if you've got a slightly twisted sense of humor, you'll probably get some enjoyment out of it. I'll say it's, it, it's maybe a little bit more creative. Yeah. It maybe requires a bit more sort of improv type stuff, but... Yeah, it forces you to... Uh, essentially, you're giving a scenario where you're going to die, and you have to draw one of your cards out to uh, say how you would use that item to save your life, and that's the scenario. Yeah. Actually, that um, I'm, th- I'm thinking, is that, is that a bit similar to Super Fight, is it called? Yeah, a little bit. I mean, isn't is that not how that one kind of works? Yeah, I think that's more cards though, where you pick your character and you pick your ability, and then. Yeah, but I thought you, I thought you kind of had to sort of weave like a narrative. You're like, oh well, Superman beats Batman because Superman does this to Batman, and then Batman's like, ah, but Batman does this, so this is why he wins. And uh, so it's similar to that, I thought, in as far as you're like, ah, well, you're falling to your doom in out of a hot air balloon and you save yourself with a fish or something i don't know that's kind of yeah, yeah. you just need you yeah, just need to make up a silly thing. narrative to explain why whatever you have is going to work or at least attempt to work how, how do you score this how do you judge whether this is actually paid off or not same way as cars against humanity is voting or yeah, everyone just goes i think this person's plan is the best everyone just or, can't or at the very least most entertaining yeah yeah it's usually most entertaining to get practicality in this game. Yeah. We, we kind of halfway through, it's like, do these attempts have to be successful? <laughs> it was, it was, we, I think we started out playing it like that, and then halfway through, it was like, can we use these in creative ways that probably won't work, but we're going to try it anyway and see what it does? Roll the dice a bit on these. It's like, this has a chance of success. Like the idea of eating a squirrel to gain its power. I I don't remember that one, but okay. I think I've just made that one up because I can't remember for the life of me what we said. I, I, I remember I tried to knock someone out by throwing a lump of solidified amber at their head. Mostly because the way we'd played the game, it was literally the only item I had left in my inventory and I had to stop <laughs> someone. I was like, ah, I have a person I need to stop and some amber. What do? Just throw it at them. <laughs> I, su- I suppose, in retrospect, the creative solution would be to extract the dinosaur DNA from the amber, <laughs> clone a dinosaur, and use the dinosaur to eat the person. But that's assuming in your death scenario you had uh, about 15 years to perfect the cloning techniques. Well, it wasn't a death scenario, it was just a doom scenario. Was, I believe the scenario we were working from there was, uh, you are the President of the United States, and uh, the, the, the intern you just had an affair with is about to go tell the press. Ah, yes, it was. Yep, her being eaten by a dinosaur would have worked. I think so. I think it would also be good for international relations that the US now has an army of dinosaurs. And get stuff done. Yeah. See? I, I should have played that. That would have won me that round, I think. Yeah, that would have won you the game. Damn it! <laughs> <laughs> Damn retrospect. <laughs> oh, hindsight, you cruel mistress. There 2020. Yep, every time. Perfect 20. Natural 20. Natural 2020. So, yeah. I I said that was fun. <laughs> and the desert thing. The desert thing you... Ah, yes, the desert thing. What, what was your take on that? Because I quite enjoyed that, and I wish we'd actually managed to finish that game, because I, I was enjoying that one. I'm not quite sure we were playing it correctly, to be honest. Do you not think? What were we doing wrong? I think we weren't uh, moving the sand enough. Oh, we weren't storm wasn't quite going up enough i don't think it had quite well to be fair we were we weren't we weren't even halfway through the game yet and it was still it, it, there was still plenty of opportunities for it to escalate considerably further yeah i, th- I think the way, the way that game works it just escalates and escalates and escalates and the longer you play it the worse it gets i mean so you kind of need to get a wiggle on if you want to actually succeed I mean, we we played the um, simpler version of it, Forbidden Island, uh, right. about two or three weeks ago. Where that's the way you've got to get you've got to work as a team to get to artifacts before the island sinks. Right. Okay. So essentially, 
every time you play you draw a card and that area gets flooded so you have to also stop the island from flooding so you can get to a path to get to where the helicopter is or as Arnie would say get to the chapa uh huh and you've got, so got to get the artifacts, but you're working together to do it. So we did it fairly comfortably. Okay, fair enough. But, but Forbidden Desert's kind of like the harder version of that. Okay, I mean, they, they sound mechanically pretty similar, just from what you described. Yeah, they're, they are essentially the same game. But. <laughs> All right, <laughs> okay. I, mean, I don't. I don't think we were doing the desert wrong. I mean, we were moving plenty of tiles around. There were some of them that were pretty well buried in sand that would have taken a bit of excavation to get through. But yeah, yeah we, we hadn't. I mean, the the storm escalation is just based on the luck of the card draws. I mean, you could end up with accidentally drawing a bunch of cards that turns into a monster storm right off the bat. But mm. you also might not. So it's like just the way the cards go. It's just like, oh, now the storm's worse. Oh, now things are covered in sand. Oh, now you lose some water. Oh, now the storm's worse. You know, keep going. I think we were right. Yeah, maybe. I'll, I'll ask uh, the people who own the game that. <laughs> All right, fair enough. I will give you that breaking update next week. Are we playing this would... game right <laughs> I would be tempted to pick up a copy of that if I thought I could get a group to actually play it on any kind of regular basis, but I don't know <laughs> that I would. What a mash live gaming. <laughs> well, we keep talking about doing something of the sort. We will. It's coming. I've, I've got to wonder if that's actually available in Tabletop Simulator, actually. Uh, and Ooh. I'm going to search for that now. Ooh. Are we actually getting something done? Well, I, I'm, I'm, I wouldn't, I wouldn't want to download it without buying it first, because at that point it's just basically piracy. So if one of us were to buy it, I don't think it would be. If one of us actually owned the game, it would be less of a crime to download this particular <coughs> mod. Oh, moral justification for stealing. Yeah. So it's Forbidden Desert. While you search for that, uh, shall we wrap this up as a first half of the show? Well, oh, I didn't get to talk. Ooh. Oh, yeah, yeah. I'll, well, like the main one. Yeah, go on. <laughs> I actually played things, yeah. I played Fishing Planet, guys. Oh, god damn it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I've moved on to Rainbow Trout, and I bought a fancy <laughs> rainbow lure for catching the rainbow trout, and it doesn't catch them any better than the standard silver lure, so... Damn it, why did I open the door? <laughs> um, that, that, that's not relevant to much. Uh, Red Goddess I played, which was a game I got oh, sent yeah. way back when, and they've changed it, like, entirely. It's like, this is, like, it's the character, the core character, and some of the, the kind of core themes of your character can transform into a rage form or a fear form. Uh, it's still there, but what they were doing with the mechanics in the first instance, and not what they're doing with the mechanics now... Now That's it's just why I wondered of... if this was like a sequel when I was looking at the screenshots. Yeah, I mean, it previous... is very different. Previously, there was kind of a lot of puzzle platformy kind of stuff going on. They were doing it had some interesting mechanics where you had to. I mean, the rage was predominantly the combat one. Fear was kind of predominantly a stealthy kind of thing, and you had to combine their powers to get through different things. And they kind of had one of them had to escort the other in different forms, and it was kind of interesting. And now it's just a Metroidvania game where with kind of a color coded combat system. It's like. Oh, you're fighting a red enemy. Turn into rage form to be able to deal damage to them. Oh, this enemy is blue. Now you need to go blue in fear form to be able to hit those. If you're in the wrong form, you won't be able to hit them for very much damage at all. So, that's... I don't know. It's, it's been, As far as Metroidvania games go, it's pretty solid. I, I, if, <laughs> if, if, if you're looking for a Metroidvania game, I'm happy to recommend it on those grounds. It's a pretty decent Metroidvania title. It's got everything you'd want from the genre it's got a character who can be upgraded with a lot of things and an interesting and beautiful environment to explore uh the combat is kind of basic uh i will say uh the bosses are mostly just reskins of each other i've owned there's there are three different bosses that i've found and they each fight slightly differently but they all look pretty much the same 
which is really weird. They're just like, oh, here's a giant stone golem boss thing. And then the second one is, uh, this one is a wolf-inspired stone golem thing. And then the third one is, here's a spider-inspired stone golem thing. And it's like, you could have just given us a wolf and a spider to fight, but okay. <laughs> uh, why, why are we running with the stone golem thing other than you already had the art assets? That doesn't make much sense. Yeah. Uh, but there you go. Yeah. Um, boss fights could be more interesting, definitely. And combat could be more interesting. But the rest of the game, yeah, very pretty. Interesting title. Got some good stuff going on. It's just not what they originally sent me all, <laughs> all, the, all, the, all those months ago. It's not the original game. Weird. Weird. And Renowned Explorers, I played so much of this this week. This, is, uh, this has become a thing that I've just started playing just because I... I really enjoy this game. I, I, it's, yeah, it's, it's very similar to out there. I would say in a lot of respects, it's kind of, you're going on an adventure and there's a lot of resource management. And if you run out of certain resources, it's game over, go back to the start, try everything again. And yeah, you are, you are renowned explorers and you are going out to be the most renowned explorer and you must go on various adventures around the world in a sort of Victorian-y, vaguely steampunky kind of setting. And it's really cool. It's super complex. It's, it took me three or four hours before I really kind of got the hang of things and I think that would put a lot of people off. I think a lot of people would be like, I can't get to grips with this. I, I think I think out there was more accessible. It didn't ask you. I, I think out there had more resources overall, but didn't ask you to manage as many of them at any given time. And but for that, by that, by that token, was simpler. Whereas the, in renowned explorers, there are you on your adventures and by doing various tasks in the game, you will collect seven different types of tokens. And depending on what buffs and perks and items and equipment and things that you have, there's loads of different ways to alter this. You can alter the value of how many points each of those tokens gives you. And those tokens will variously give you money and influence and uh, research and some other stuff. <laughs> and then you need to manage your resources when you're on expedition, otherwise you're going to run out of resources and have to go home or start taking debuffs. Um... And it's going to make your adventures harder to do because you're debuffed now and everybody's got, like, reduced defense because they're hungry. Um, you, you've also got... I can... Uh, for some reason, I can never remember what this is. Oh, Resolve. You've got Resolve is very, various events can cause you to fail Resolve. Or if your character gets defeated in combat, they'll lose Resolve. And if your Resolve hits zero, the party's over. And ultimately, all of these sort of points and influences and currencies and things all flow into a prestige value, which is kind of like, here's how famous you are. It's your... Well, it's your renown. You're the renowned explorer. It's like, here's your, here's your figure of how, how famous you are. And there's just... There's a lot of complex things at play there and then each of the characters have got not only their base stats they've got perks and then they've got other abilities and then they can be buffed and you've got the equipment and there's just layers on layers on layers on layers on layers on layers on layers of things that all have really complex relationships with each other and i think i think that could be overwhelming to a lot of people but if you can get you if, if you get your teeth into it and i have it's quite compelling i like it a lot uh, it, it, it doesn't hurt that it also looks gorgeous. I really, they're going to go a cartoony kind of style going on. I think it looks great. So, yeah, happy to recommend that one, I think. Renowned Explorers is uh, one of those things I will happily say to people. You should probably play that. Unless you don't like complex things, then you might not like it. I don't know. <laughs> what a sales pitch. I don't know if they have a demo, actually. I'm kind of wondering if they have a demo. If they have a demo, you could probably figure out if you like that. It does have very positive reviews, which is not overwhelmingly positive, but... It is 92% out of 100 reviews are positive. I should probably add mine to that to make it slightly more positive. And... Positively oh, on, positive? Positively positive, yes. Uh, I haven't even gotten into the combat system, which is all mood-based, and it's like, oh, you you can without you don't have to resolve combat by stabbing each other. You can resolve combat by complimenting the other team until they're happy to join your cause, <laughs> and then they're like, okay, I don't want to fight you anymore, and then they just leave the field of battle because you complimented them enough. I think that was Will being sick. 
Yeah. <laughs> or, or you could be sneaky. You can insult them so much that they become so angry that they leave the field, or they become so terrified of you that they leave the field. So there's, there's a lot of different moods, and there's kind of a rock, paper, scissors thing going on with different strategies in combat. So being friendly is superior to being sneaky. Being sneaky is superior to being aggressive, and being aggressive is superior to being friendly. If someone's being really nice to you, uh, the best way to deal with them is to stab them in the face, apparently. Works for me. Uh, I was going to say, as I, as I have fairly well established at this stage, is my preferred method of dealing with people in general. It, I have actually been playing really aggressive in this game. It's like, ah, well, we, we, can do, we, can, we can strategize, or I can go with a big knife. I can go with a big knife. <laughs> So yeah, the, the, the Red Goddess and Renowned Explorers are the two noteworthy things I played this week. Uh, Red Goddess is good, just different to what I expected. Renowned Explorers is excellent. Yay. Now, if you're wanting to wrap things up, I'm, I'll happily let you wrap things up. Okay, we'll take a short commercial break and then we'll be back for the second half of our charming little podcast. With a little surprise. Dun dun dun. Surprise! We'll be back. Surprise! It's Tulkus. <laughs> well, way to ruin it. <laughs> Sorry. We'll be back after this message from our sponsors. But a mash podcast is back. Michael has left us. No. Michael has left us. He did. It, it's. It's. We are running. We are running late, and it's too late for him. So. Uh, yeah. He's gone. Uh, which means it's the guy so who was sad. stepping in for me as host to do my hosty bits instead of me doing the singing. Um, yeah, so I don't know. Who's going to run this show? I need someone to run this show. Me! Talk, talk us, it's your show. <laughs> okay. Um, yay. So what, so what was the surprise? <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm glad you referred to the show notes to know what we're doing. Uh, with the launch oh. of uh, episode 50, we decided that gaming news always seems to fall a bit flat for us because no one ever has any strong opinions about it. And also, gaming news has a fairly obnoxious tendency to be pretty boring. There's a lot of weeks where nothing happens. So we're going to fill in the gaps with other things. And there is... Uh, it's, this is something that a lot of our audience, I guess, is going to have to Google. Because apparently neither Alzarath nor Talkers knew what the hell this was. Uh, but if you're in the UK, at the very least, you should hopefully be familiar with a concept called Desert Island Discs. Which is a thing nope, the BBC has run for years. Never, never, ever, 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 ever. No. Well, it's basically. So, Maroka, tell us more about these desert island desks as I struggle to fulfill my role as host. Uh, well, we're not doing desert island discs, we're doing desert island downloads, which is basically uh, our guest for the week, which would be uh, Mr. Alzarath himself. Hello. Uh, hello. Hi, Alzarath. Um, you, you are going to do be... the show. <laughs> Thank <laughs> I, you for I... joining us. Are you doing the hosty thing? Okay, I see. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Alright, uh, Des Desert Island Downloads. We'll see our guest, Alzarath, uh, cast onto a desert island, and he needs to take with him uh, five video games to, ta to entertain him for the rest of eternity. And you're not allowed to do any sh sneaky shenanigans. You're not trying to escape from the island with the video games or anything, and they cannot help you in any way. Uh, but for the purposes of this kind of thought experiment... Do I have all, access to multiplayer? I was going to say yes. All games will work with full functionality as intended, so we'll give we'll give you that much. Yes, you know you're not going to have to pick and choose based on what you think would work and what won't work. They'll all work. You can't use them to get off an island. You can't use them to escape in any kind of way. But you can play them to the full extent of the way they're intended to be played. You mean I can't use GeoGuessr to help people locate my position on Earth? <laughs> That is exactly I, the spirit in which this game was not intended, yes. <laughs> the way I see this game working is that you have intentionally segregated yourself on this island to escape humanity, to purely play video games for the rest of your life. That might be a better way of actually uh, contextualizing this, actually. That might be a, <laughs> to spend an you entire have life... Hermit. <laughs> to spend an entire life mining quartz. You, yes, you're, you're, you have chosen... On a private island... Yeah, you, you've chosen to become a video gaming hermit who has, for whatever reason in life, made it their quest to master the art of five video games and five video games only. <laughs> what are those five video games? 
Uh, well, I probably want a real time strategy on there, so I'm going to say StarCraft 2. Okay. I, I hope that I would eventually be able to get StarCraft 3, but I <laughs> don't see that happening. Um, Your course, mine. I, was, I would like you to elaborate on these bits. No, I don't want you to just bomb through a list of five games and we're done. <laughs> okay. Why, why have you picked StarCraft 2 today? Tell us a bit um, more about your love for StarCraft 2 and why it is on your list. Because it's a game that I actually want to spend time mastering but don't have the time to do so. That's, That's pretty much the main uh, reason. Yeah, that, that works, and yeah. I, of I all actually the games do that really do like that, StarCraft, yeah. so... Okay, I enjoy cool. StarCraft. Um, and I chose that over Warcraft simply because I prefer the atmosphere of it. Okay, I prefer cool. the single-player story. Um, next one would be probably Minecraft because there's a lot you can do with it. You can make almost any game in it, and there's interesting things, and Tulkus would probably strangle me if I didn't get Minecraft, find where my hermit hole was, and kill me. <laughs> right, okay. Um, you, you're simply, you, you have only chosen this game to maintain your connection to Tulkus in the outside world. <laughs> this is no, what you've done here, from isn't a, it? No, to keep him from finding me and ending my existence Okay. Well, you in can, the gaming world. We, we can I still have to... Neil's book. Well, like, like, like the Buddha, like the Siddhartha or whoever, we try to transcend the mortal world by, by foregoing the, the body and the demands of the flesh and, depo and devoting ourselves wholeheartedly to the divine, cerebral task of mining quartz. That, or I can try to make a computer in Minecraft that emulates my brain. Also a noble goal, yes. <laughs> <laughs> if someone ever does that, for that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Uh, the next one, I was kind of torn between Final Fantasy VI and Final Fantasy Tactics. I chose VI because I really like the story. Well, Tactics has more replay value. VI just... Yeah. I still play that almost every year. All right. Okay, cool. I mean, I think um, if you're going to poke poke me for a choice of uh, Final Fantasy anything versus Tactics, I'm more lean towards Tactics, but yeah. I, li I, like, I like the Tactics stuff, but yeah. Tactics is an amazing game. It's a little bit easy for me, though. Because I've played it almost as much as six. Is, it, is um, this is this tactics as in tactics tactics or any of the other tactics? Because the original you know, PlayStation tactics. Right. Okay, that's the one. That's the, of them. That's like the one I haven't played. But okay, it's my favorite one of the set. I don't like the law systems in the like advanced versions. Okay, they bother me. Enough. All right. Um, next one would be City Skylines because I need a city builder, and Minecraft won't work for that because it that takes is, too long to mine out your city. There's a heck of a time sink as well. Oh yeah, very good at that. The last one, I don't know if too many people will have heard of, but it's, you don't know Jack the Ride. I don't know Jack the Ride, no. Um... It's a trivia game. <laughs> a hilarious trivia game. It's on Steam, I recommend picking it up. Okay, I, I'm, I'm, it. I'm vaguely familiar with the concept of you don't know Jack. What is you don't know Jack the Ride? I mean, it's one where... Different? It's what? volume four, I believe, of You Don't Know Jack. But you're basically stuck in an elevator. Every one is 13 questions long. But I think it has the best humor out of all the You Don't Know Jacks because it gets really dark at times. As opposed to just strange. Okay, I'm, I'm just looking it up now, actually, and... I'm not getting... I'm trying to figure out what the ride thing is about but is this a kind of a weird kind of themed kind of thing is it it's a theme to it yes okay you're trapped in an elevator and you have to choose one of two floors to go to just based on a hint that can really gets dark at times but it's got the basic dis or dat and stuff like that got roadkill little mini games and stuff fixed in it doesn't have gibberish questions that i remember it's been a while since i played it I hate gibberish questions. <laughs> okay. I'm looking at the screenshots for it. I have no idea what's going on. Yeah, it's one of those games you have to experience. I guess so. I may have to do an LP of it. I don't know if they'd get pissed about that or not. No idea. Oh, okay. How do, how do you LP a trivia game, though? Uh, well, something like that. Surely you'd need like a multiplayer group to do yeah. that with, wouldn't you? Unfortunately, it's only local multiplayer, so I'd have to kidnap somebody. Ah, uh, right. Um, well, I've seen I, I've, I've seen people like screen share uh, some of the some of the other Jackbox stuff on yeah. Skype, and then stream that on like Twitch, which 
kind of worked okay, I think. <laughs> Because I think, I, well, and I don't know about you, don't know, Jack, certainly some of the other stuff kind of allows people to do stuff like through the website and stuff. Yeah. I don't know. There, I, yeah, there's kind of a weird bunch of things. I really wish they would. There was a You Don't Know Jack online, but I don't know if it's even possible to get it anymore. I don't know. It's not something I've ever delved too heavily into. I like trivia games that are smart asses. What can I say? Fair enough. Okay. How many have you got there? How many five. Were was that five? That was okay. five. Killed far less time than you thought, huh? Yeah. I, 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 I think I was hoping you would talk for more about each of them, but okay. Fine, you're a terrible guest. You're not invited back. <laughs> okay. Uh, unfortunately, like like the Desert Island Discs, we're not playing clips of This is true, yeah. Between... They, get to, they get to actually play the tracks, yeah. don't they? Yeah. You could play like a little snippet of each game. They're all accessible. Yeah, then that, that means I need to, to go find footage from mass. somewhere and put some <laughs> effort into editing a video, and <laughs> that's not happening. You didn't think this through. <laughs> it, I think it was well thought through. I just think I was hoping it, I was just hoping it would prompt more discussion than it did. Oh well. Uh, I suppose that uh, that just uh, lets us move on to video gaming releases. Then, fair enough. Let's do that. Let's start with. Video gaming releases a week commencing September 6th with Armicrog, which I think is already out on some stuff, is it not? That's a Kickstarter game, isn't it? Oh, is it? It is a point-and-click clay and puppet animated adventure game. I think it was a Kickstarter. Okay. It, it's, see, it sounds familiar. I was going to say, yeah, I, I, I feel like I've heard of it. Yeah, it, it, it is from yes, yeah. from May 2013. They uh, raised nearly a million dollars, and yeah, successfully funded. I just I, I thought that game was already out. So I would if you'd said I recognize the name, and I would if you'd asked me, I would be like yes, that's a game that is out. That's one of the weird things about Kickstarter is, like, the game is there before it's there. Yeah, it's kind of in your mind as a thing that exists, in spite of the fact they haven't made it yet. Speaking of which, uh, I've been getting updates about Guns of Icarus Co-op, like, three-ish years after that Kickstarter, <laughs> I think now. Um, I guess they're getting somewhere close to having something playable, so that's fun. Uh, we have Ascendant for the PS4, which is a 2.5D side-scrolling beat-em-up with roguelike elements, because every game needs those this day these days. It's got a cool art style. I dig the art style. Very minimalist. I remember when we had permadeath in games. It was called Three Lives. Well, yeah. Lose last one, you die. <laughs> but then you put in the Konami code and get more. Or some other code, some if games. nothing else. Uh, we have Hypervoid. It is a single-player third-person space shooter that jumps the player through stellar wormholes packed with high action experience. This sounds no like media some attached sort of, to it. Yeah, no. It sounds like some sort of endless runner -y type thing. Although it's described as being a shoot 'em up, so I don't know. Oh, I think Maybe I, it's I, an I, endless I, shmup? I, I was gonna say I have a feeling we looked at this recently. So I mean I seem to recall something vaguely meeting that description that was kind of like shmuppy it's like Audio surf meets shmup kind of thing. You're like surfing <laughs> along a track whilst also shooting shooting stuff that comes at you along the track. I'm wondering if that was there. That. Actually, is a shmup that does the audio thing from games like uh, I forget about, what it was called. Are you talking about Beat Hazard? Could be. Beat Hazard is excellent. I will happily recommend Beat Hazard. Beat Hazard is a, Beat Hazard is a fantastic game. Looks kind of like a trippy uh, asteroid game. Yeah, it's kind of, yeah, pretty asteroids. Yeah, it's it's just mind-bogglingly melting. Melting, yes, it's mind-meltingly colorful and bright and sensational. Yes. Now we have Tearaway Unfolded for the PS4. It is a remake of Tearaway for the PS4 and DualShock 4 controller, which it's like yeah, again, it's it's from these. Are, this is um, this is the same guys who made Little Big Planet, isn't it? And I would quite like to see something of that, but I still don't own any of the platforms that they're putting this thing on, so I can't. So, guys, put it on stop. PC, people. 
Yeah, but, well, well you, you, do, you, do you know what Tear Away is? No. Uh, okay, they, it, was, it was originally for the Vita, and Vita only, and it's like the only, get, probably the only game that made particularly decent usage of the fact that it had the touchscreen on the back, which was, y- you could, like, interact with the world by, essentially, when you touch the back, you, like, poked your fingers through the screen and you could interact <laughs> with the objects inside the game world. Cool. So I was like, oh, you need, it was, it's, it's all done in paper, paper craft kind of thing, it tear, hence tear away and tearing the paper. So I was like, oh, there's things in the world and you could stick your finger through the paper and tear the world inside it and change the world that way, solve puzzles and things. Which sounded really cool, but Vita, and nobody owns a Vita, so, yeah. <laughs> I'm surprised I don't want them. a Vita. It, it seems to be getting better these days. It seems to be more of a reasonable prospect than it once was. But, eh, I've, I've, still, I've still got my DS fat and it still does me well. I like my <laughs> DS fat. It's fat and cool. <laughs> uh, I, I, need to up, I, need to, I need to drastically update my handheld gaming experiences, I think. Same here. I think the newest one I have is a Game Boy Advance. That's a solid console. That's a really yep, good console. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> you won't hear any objections from me regarding that one. Uh, we have Leo's Fortune. Mustache. Th- there is a mustache. 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 It, it is about a very high fidelity fluffy blob with a very high fidelity mustache. That's all we know from the box art, if nothing else. It is a physics based p- puzzle adventure for mobile platforms. If you want high fidelity mustaches on your phone, this is where you need to be at, I suppose. And now I'm just going to have Vegeta and a mustache stuck in my head for a while. Okay. I'm going to pretend I know what you're talking about. (laughs) Some of your viewers will get it. Okay. Uh, We have Ajax. Jax! I knew that was coming. (laughs) (laughs) It's a Jax. It is a Jax. Jax. He's trying to communicate to us. (laughs) And nobody still has any idea what you're talking about. He's, he's trying to he's trying to send us a message. This is an omen. Oh, do you think there's something wrong with Jax? We must try to reach him somehow. Oh, Maroka. Oh, Maroka. This is out on the PS4. It was originally out on the ZX Spectrum in 1987. That's all you need to know Almost about that one. Almost as old as me. It is about the same age as me, pretty much, yeah. It's seven years older than me. It's eight years older than me. <laughs> Oh, good lord. Broken Sword, The Serpent's Curse. Why does Broken Sword sound familiar? Apparently it's the fifth game in the franchise, so maybe because there are four games already, maybe you've heard of the first four games? Possibly. I think I might have played one of them. It was partially funded by Kickstarter. It is a point-and-click adventure, I think? Some sort of adventure thing. I don't know. I imagine, yeah, look, it's an episodic thing. This is episode five. I imagine if you're invested in this thing and have played the first four episodes, this will be what you're waiting for. If you haven't played the first four episodes, this is probably going to be of less interest to you than it might otherwise be. Just a thought. Uh, Frozen Freefall sounds pretty awful. It is block matching based on Frozen. Great. Beat. Right. Just what I'm looking forward to. Yeah, get those LPs going. That's 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 that. Get in there before PewDiePie does. Uh, knock knock for the PS4. Who's there? Is is it, it a a Kickstarter funded Rus- adventure game by Russian developer Icepick Lodge? Is there? It's got a picture of an angry looking child with a lamp. This is well the. Yep. the the images are not the most helpful of things, so I can't tell what we're looking at here. There's some yeah. videos of it up, but it, they're kind of like just half-assed LPs of it, so you don't really get a good idea. Right. Uh, the game has been devised by the developers from 19 mysterious files sent to them by an unknown figure via email. They are asked to finish the project using the information stored in the files with the, the only catch they had to include everything in the files, but designing it was entirely up to them. What? What if it was a Nigerian... Did they just get getting things from Nigerian princes? <laughs> <laughs> they're like, someone, sent us a, someone has sent us an email. <gasps> Do you think they're asking us to develop a game? <laughs> <laughs> I 
It, it says, if you send me $10,000, they must be asking us to develop a video game. <laughs> Seems like it's taking some inspiration from, I believe it's called Home. Basically a uh, horror slash thing where you have some kind of things where you have to go to sleep to advance the story and stuff like that. Okay. Almost like a point and click. That's what it's looking like so far. Right. But I've only watched a few seconds of it now. It is describing it as a game of hide-and-seek against unusual guests who are visiting the house of a hermit. Play a character. The aim is merely to survive the night with your sanity intact. Oh, it's Five Nights at Freddy's. I don't know. It's horror. Will, what do you think of it? <laughs> that, that, that's oh, that's what I do whenever I see horror. I'm just like, <laughs> Will, you do horror. I don't know. I have home. I haven't played home. But I Have you played Lone really Survivor? I also have Lone Survivor and haven't played it. <laughs> Lone Survivor is good. Yeah. I, I heard good things. I don't but know. Knock it Knock doesn't... doesn't look promising. No, it okay. doesn't. Well, then we have Shooter Space Shot, which is um, originally for the PlayStation 1. This is now for the PlayStation 3. It was originally from 2000. It was a shooter mob that was only available in Japan. Really it's... tapping in on that nostalgia here. Yeah, yeah, capitalizing on the market that was really demanding that release of Japan-only titles. What? Uh, okay. Mm -hmm. Onigiri is out on the X-Bone. Is a free-to-play Mamopaga, which is already out on PC and PS4. And being the free-to-play Mamopaga guy, I feel like I should know more about this than I do, but I'm afraid I don't know much about it. It looks Japanese and looks anime. That's all I can tell you. English version is still in development, according to the giant bomb thing. Okay. Japanese mythology. Now that is something I know absolutely zero about. I can't say no much other than our little discussion from last week about Raiden versus Raijin. <laughs> so I'm going to have oh, to start yeah, yelling fun. Japanese mythology at a Tulkus. That, 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 that was the fun discussion we had. And I was right and you were wrong. And you stole my quartz. Yes. Uh, we also have Lovers in a Dangerous Space Time, which is a game I've seen played a lot at PAX, but not actually played myself, which is a two-player co-op thing where you're flying a spaceship and there are, like, you can man the shields or you can man the guns or you can fly the spaceship or do something else. There's something else on the spaceship. But there are only two of you, so you can only man two of the systems yeah. at any one time. So you're kind of running around the spaceship trying to control all the things. And it's... Um, I imagine it will try your friendship, I'm quite sure. That sounds uh, ace. It does look pretty cool, I believe it's... It, uh, everybody yeah, everybody I see, I saw play, it looked like they were getting a kick out of it, certainly. Um, yeah, I wouldn't mind giving that a go at some point. I don't know if it's local co-op only, though. That would kind mm. of... Yeah, pink. So it, it is very pink. There is a the pink. The spaceship is big and pink. Yes. What just like my mailbox? Yes. Like mod. And just like mod, indeed. <laughs> and there is there is a there is a boss which appears to be a giant bear in space. So that's cool as well. It is Ursa, the boss is Ursa Major. Of course, it is. It's a giant bear in space. Why not? <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> Uh, we have Castle Crashers Remastered for the Bone. This is Castle Crashers, but probably a little bit shinier than you remember it. I don't know what they've added to it, but it is certainly shinier. I have a feeling I got a press release for this, like, recently, and... I, I've read, I read some, I saw something somewhere that I didn't read recently, and I was like, eh, okay, Castle Crashers on a floor mat that I can't do anything with, so meh. I guess if you have a bone and you've never played Castle Crashers, you should probably check that out, because Castle Crashers is actually pretty good. Yes. Great Be side scroller. Yeah, the Behemoth makes some nice games. Castle Crashers is very much one of those. Go check that out. Uh, the Swindle is for the Wii U, which is one of those games that has become fairly popular recently, I guess. Uh, one of, it's from... The guys that um, did Ben there, Dan that and Time Gentlemen, please, which were on, which I think has been on sale as like the cheapest game on Steam a bunch of times, which is why most people have probably own that one. It was like, oh yes, you can buy this game for about ten pence. I <laughs> should just like to observe that the 
meant for the swindle at the it has a pound sign instead of a dollar sign and therefore i disown it okay well everybody else at the minute seems to be playing it but it is a is a physics based platformer where you must infiltrate facilities and steal things and you're kind of time limited you need to try and become you need to you need to steal like some ultimate treasure within like a hundred days and each mission takes a day and if you die you lose all the progress of the character and you have to start with a new character and you still have a hundred days to work through and yeah kind of a race against time physics based platformy rogue like he project procedural generation thingy yes and it's available things. on pc already so and it is already out on pc yes and foreigners a bunch of other <laughs> stuff to be fair it says it's out on wii u on giant bomb here but uh the Giant Bomb page it says it's already out on PS3 and Vita and PC and PS4 and three other platforms. So, yeah. They do, they, they managed to do a fairly successful multi-format launch there, I guess. Yeah. Uh, Cube, Q-U-B-E, Director's Cut for the Wii U. Which Ooh. is... We've looked at before and I said I didn't know what it was either. And I can, never, I, I can never remember what it stands for. It's, a, it's an acronym that's... S quickly utilizing block extrusion or something like that. I don't know. It's a puzzle game about blocks and probably extruding them. I would imagine. It's block been, extruding. Mm -hmm. It it's been out for a while on PC. I don't know. It says director's cut. It uh, May two thousand fourteen. But I have a feeling Cube has been around for a lot longer than that. I've seen that name around for a while. Uh, we have Super Mario Maker for the Wii U, which is a, which is basically Nintendo decided they don't want to make games anymore, so they've just given you the dev kit, I think. So, yeah, now you can make Mario levels instead of having Nintendo make them for you. I wouldn't mind making some, like, Super Mario Brothers 3 type levels. Well, there are, there are many engines out there that could already do this, but yeah, hey. If I could be... It's like the extended testing initiative for Portal 2. It is, but well, Valve, Valve were pretty upfront about that one. They were like, hey, we don't want to make any more levels for this game anymore. You guys do it. <laughs> was, yeah. they, was not, that was not far from what the press release was for that. Was just, they were just like, hey, look, you guys want more content for this game. We don't want to make more content for this game. You guys make it, which is mostly the attitude they take towards TF2 as well. And it seems to be working out pretty well. So, I can't particularly fault Nintendo too much for jumping on that bandwagon. It seems to kind of work. I'll grant them that one. So, I have to yeah. say, Lazy next Gun week looks Game like Death. it's cheating. Sorry? Next week looks like it's cheating. Uh, I didn't I didn't skip ahead quite to, to the next week. What, what have I missed? For it looks like it's cheating. Board. Three times. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> yes, I see. Same game, just dropped there a bajillion times, sure. Because well, you have ultimate deluxe and flatulated versions. Yeah, gotta catch them all, right? Gotta pre-order yep. them all from all the different and stores I, to get all the hats. What would be really funny is if each of them included different things. Like Batman. You had to buy each and every one to get everything. Mm. Well, which game was it that did? Oh, it's, it's the new Deus Ex has done a load of weird bollocksy stuff that um, doesn't let you get all the things. You can, like, pick and choose different bits from different pre-order locations and things, and it's like, it's, that's a really awful way of doing all the things. It's a very worrying precedent, I think. Well, People are still going to pre-order it. Of course but... they are, of course they are, because once again, because the, I mean, the, the worst part of that is, that I've seen this a few times as well, is that they're doing, like, target goals. If we can reach this many pre-orders, everybody gets a thing, which is like, oh god, you've done stretch goals for pre-orders. It's like, <laughs> that's horrifying. No, you don't get to have stretch goals for pre-orders. Just and no. And this is why I play indie games and buy the expensive games when they're on sale. <laughs> yes, this is why a lot of people do that, to be fair, I think, at this stage. Yes. This is this is why I only play the press copies I get of everything. <laughs> that way I don't have to worry about anything else. I just I just cover what people tell me to cover. Uh, let's do some Steam releases then. Uh, first up on the list we have... Um, for some reason, actually, top of my list is Smite, which I rather thought was already out. 
I'm not sure why that's sat there. But it's always it's early release. I mean, early access. Sorry. Is it? Is it really still early access? It's something like that. Really? Better they release an expansion for it or something. It must be an expansion because Smite's been out for a long time. I'm quite sure. Or am I? Or 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 was it? Or was it just not on Steam? It was on I Steam. Thought it, I thought it was on Steam, but yeah, you go on to it, it's like Smite. Yeah, this is it's not Smite expansion. It's this is Smite. It's out on eighth of September two thousand fifteen. The, irre the irreverent mythology of Smite will make you a believer. Man, why do you gotta be irre irreverent? Angry face. Okay, well, this is a Mowbray thing about mythology. If you Whoa, want a MOBA, then, yeah, if you want a MOBA, that's a MOBA. And do you know what another, perhaps, better game, arguably better game is about mythology? Uh, I don't know, Tulkus. Could you possibly <laughs> recommend such a thing? The Twelve Labors of Hercules! Did you also know, Tulkus, that that game is currently in a bundle? Yay! <laughs> Tell actually... us more about this bundle, Maroka. If you go to... I can't believe I'm plugging this. <laughs> I shouldn't be plugging this. We've got no affiliation with this, by the way. But if you go to IndieGala.com uh, slash Monday, I think it is right now. Uh, yeah, there is... For $2, you can buy all three Herky Cheeses plus a bunch of other stuff. I don't know what any of the other stuff was. I bought it just for the three Herky Cheeses. <laughs> I was like, that's £1.30 in real money. £1.30 for three Herky Cheese games. You cannot go wrong. That's 40p per Herky Cheese ish. You already own one of these as well. <laughs> I already own one of them as well. So actually, it kind of worked out about 65p per Herky Cheese, <laughs> which is a little steep per Herky Cheese, I, I'll grant you. But hey, now I have a spare Herky Cheese to give to a friend who needs more Herky Cheese in their life. Ooh, ooh, ooh on, on the, uh, on, on the, like, the button mesh, on, on, I mean, the Hobbit. On charity livestream thing we're going to be on on September twenty sixth, by the way, um, you, we could like maybe like have a competition. Yes, like, we could have maybe... a prize giveaway. We could give away yeah, 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 a, a copy prize of giveaway, like Herky either cheese. to the like maybe to the person who donates the most or to a random sub or something. I like that. Yeah, yeah. The person who donates the most money whilst hashtag Team Suicide is streaming uh, will win a copy of The Labors of Herky Cheese Three Girl Power. <laughs> How's that for a deal? A couple of you hate our viewers that much. <laughs> <laughs> I'm also offering a thing that they can literally just go and buy for two dollars <laughs> right now. <laughs> <laughs> but oh, but but it will be a petition because it came from you. And oh, Maroka. <laughs> but Maroka, what if we have no one donates during our time? What if what if Maud and 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 Watson exhorts them to part with their monies before we can? Then I will burn the steam key and nobody shall have it. <laughs> no. Okay. Well, that that tells you, uh, guys, you gotta save your dollars for Herky Cheese. Just I, one dollar today. You donate one dollar to to Hope Athlon whilst we're streaming, and if nobody else donates more than that, then you can have Herky Cheese. I'll There's a deal. Five, I'll donate five dollars just to burn it personally. <laughs> and you know what that means? If you donate one dollar, that gives you a net positive of one dollar. Profits! Yeah. <laughs> I think that's a deal. I think I think someone's <laughs> gonna bite them. <laughs> yeah. Okay, let's move on to more releases. We have Master Spy, which is probably a game about some sort of espionage. It is stealth. Is stealth flavor of the month? There seems to be a lot of stealth stuff over the last couple months. Everybody's doing stealth all of a sudden. It is a stealth-based precision platformer with retro cutscenes full of espionage, intrigue, and betrayal. There's a few Kickstarters for stealth games too, so maybe there is something to it. Really? Yeah. Um, don't know. Maybe someone someone must have done it well, and everyone's going like, "Hey, we can do that." That, or they're releasing it with Metal Gear coming out. Oh yeah, maybe could be possibly tied to that. Either way, this looks horrible. <laughs> there are many things that will kill you instantaneously. It's oh, it's Super Meat Boy Stealth is what that looks like. It's lots of precision platforming and lots of things that will kill you instantly whilst you also need to stealth it up. Ugh. Don't think no, I want any part you. of that. No. Uh, Armour Krog we've already taken a look at. And it still looks familiar, but apparently it's still not out yet. Who knew? Uh, sure. Uh, we have Epic Quest of the Four Crystals, which is 
a non-Japanese JRPG, apparently. And it's the most one of the decade. It's the most it looks like non-Japanese it was made in RPG JRPG. Maker. Wow. It, there's a, probably a very good chance it was made in RPG Maker, I would, I would wager. Oh, the uh, town folk of Farmville. Wow. <laughs> I think to be fair, actually, I, for some reason, the screenshots are not working for me. I don't know. Steam is derped, I guess. Uh, normally, I'm, I'm normally I'm a pretty good judge of whether something's been made in RPG Maker or not, because I've tinkered around with it enough times in the past to have a good handle on what all the default sprites are. <laughs> so if someone uses one, I'll be like, I know you what that looks like. It doesn't look like default sprites. It looks kind of like um, Tales of the Old North. Right. Where it's like extra tall sprites, but still that kind of RPG Maker vibe from it. Yeah, and there's a lot of content packs you can buy for RPG Maker to give it different flavors, so they could have they could have disguised it well. Or they could have actually designed their own sprites, which, you know, could be a thing. Yeah. Oh, the, oh, the screenshots are working. Um, yeah, that looks, that, that, that still looks very RPG Maker-y. Not that, I always say this, it's like not necessarily that there's there's not necessarily anything wrong with that. I played a lot of really excellent games that were made in RPG Maker. Some of them, some of my favorite games of all time were made in RPG Maker. Two of my all-time favorite games have been made in RPG Maker. Admittedly, (laughs) they weren't typical Final Fantasy-ish JRPG type stuff. They were completely subversive, interesting narrative affairs, but nonetheless... They were still RPG Maker. How much video games have you played, Maroka? Wow. Uh, Any that he can get for free. Lot. <laughs> uh, I thought uh, yeah. that's, that's what you do when you don't have, haven't have sold your soul to Hearthstone. Mm-hmm. I also bought a lot of bundles back in the day. Lacra Mountain, a Hearthstone adventure. He's still outdated. You're no. still behind the times. No. For, for always and forever, Emperor Thorthon will live in our hearts. Cool. Well, we have Warhammer End Times, so he will not I live in our hearts so too much longer. I am so excited about this. Okay. Oh, you you must you must have an opinion on this. Tell us uh, what this is. This is Left 4 Dead, but with giant rats. Old Skaven. Okay. Uh, it's it's going to be ace. The thing that it reminds me of is that Hell Raid title that was yeah being made by Techland. It looks almost like they ripped assets from it. It's it, they they've been pretty they've been pretty honest that it is literally just like a, a reskin of Leopard Dead, but you know, I'm fine with it's, that. It's, it's yeah, it's in the Warhammer universe. They've got their own heroes. They've all got their own magics and abilities, and it looks so good. I can't wait. I'll give it a try if it's affordable. Uh, I, I Less than may thirty try bucks. It. Yeah, I don't care how much it costs. I will, I will throw money at this. <laughs> there's another one of those ones that I don't even know that's out this week actually because again the, I'm just going through the Steam it releases snuck up and on me. yeah there's hmm? sorry it, it snuck up on me like I, yeah. I knew it was coming out soon but uh, I don't know that it is this week because again Steam yeah. says Q3 which is I, 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 I this, what with the, this is with us lacking planning these days um, I, I'm not looking at the dates closely enough so that might not be out this week it might just be sat there on Steam pretending to be out this week Getting my hopes up. Uh, what is definitely out this week will be Fault Milestone 2, side colon above. Um, which story is game. a... Sorry? It looks like one of those uh, anime story games. I forget what they're a, called. A visual novel? Yeah. It is a visual novel because I watched the entirety of the first one on Dodger's channel. This one actually is a pretty good story, although the the exposition go maybe goes a little bit too far. They kind of... Uh, the, it, it's in a world with magic and mana, and the, whoever wrote it clearly needed to explain in excruciating depth exactly how magic works in this world. They they leave nothing to imagination or hand waving or indeed magic. It's they 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 tell you how mana works in this world. So they basically explain depth. magical string theory. Yeah, not not so far off. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's a really good story, and it's an excellent story. But they could maybe tone that back a little bit. You're a little uh, bit too far with that. Uh, no, no, Maroka, no exposition and magic and world building. That's my jam. You wrong, yeah, girl. Yeah, Tulkas can't survive without exposition. 
Okay, well, if you want world building, this 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 thing builds a hell of a world. Go read it. Focus I'm is like ninety nine percent exposition. I, I was I was playing Spiral Knights more for the story than anything. I mean, come on, the the, the Skylark has to get repaired, and the strangers. I got by stuff from them and explore the clockworks. You know, man, 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 man. And the artifacts. Yeah, yeah. Don't forget the artifact. Oh yeah, the artifact, and there is a, a, a giant squirrel that tried to kill me. Yeah, a his giant name squirrel. like start, <laughs> His name like started with like an R or something. It was it was. Cool. What? Oh. No, he's talking about Herex. Or no, is is it Herex? It's, it who, it who started steals with the an R. Started with an R. Oh right. Uh, I think that, yeah. Well, ultimately, it ends up in the hands of Herex. Spoiler alert. Well, I, um, I I think I killed this particular. Yeah, giant you do. Squirrel. You do fight. You do fight something at the start. I can't remember what that one's name is. No, it's a gremlin. Is what they are, by the way. Oh, FYI. Right. Oh okay. I. It looks like a giant squirrel. Yeah, Tolkis isn't up to the Snarbalax yet. <laughs> oh. You will. You will oh. like the Snarbalax. He's furry. Oh yay! Furry and glowy and cool. Is there any quartz in? But Spiral Knights. There is Obsidian. You can't just name a different block and expect <laughs> that to count. <laughs> it's, it's, it's the shiniest, smoothest, prettiest block I could possibly imagine in Spiral Knights. It's, yeah. You surely don't have Quartz, but they have Obsidian. It's, it's sure the best I can offer you. Surely they don't have Obsidian. Some, some they do cells. have Dirt. <laughs> Well, they, they it's, do it's, have dirt. It, it's like if I asked you to uh, give me a cup of tea, and you're like, well, I don't have any tea, but I do have... Water. Water? That's yeah. a reasonable alternative. Well, if, you, if, you, if you say, if you, if, you, if, you would, if you would say, hey, could I have a cup of tea, and someone's like, oh, I haven't got any tea, would you like a glass of water? You know, yeah, you'd be like, okay, yeah, sure, I'm thirsty, I don't have I'll have tea. a glass would of water. Would you care for a glass of horse urine? Well, what if exactly, I was like, that's I, the comparison well, I was looking for. Well, what if I was like, I don't have a, bl a glass of t tea, but you... Can I have something like wine. super spicy, or... I don't, e I don't even know, man. All I say is I note displeasure. Anyway, we have the Dreamatorium of Dr. Magnus 2, which is a... Hidden object game. Professor Layton-y thing, I would have said. There's, there's puzzles as well as hidden objects. Which is like, it, seem, it seems that most hidden object stuff seems to want to shoehorn in a bunch of puzzles now since Professor Layton came along. So you, you can't get by on hidden objects alone these days. No siree. No, people want some puzzles with their hidden objects. I want a match game with hidden objects where you have to match four hidden objects. At probably exists uh ooh, i love in a dangerous <laughs> space time is out on steam i don't believe it has online multiplayer dang <laughs> oh. i feel like we should probably get that for button mash though that would be a good one yeah. to have one for button mash yeah should have a look at that i'll poke um sunil into buying it <laughs> I can't believe you're, you're going to buy Blubber Than a Dangerous Space Time, but not have Hearthstone. And also, Sunil reference, woo! Yeah, woo. <laughs> uh, remember remember the, the sign, Sunil, only you can't see him because he's not here, see? Yeah, that, that was cool. It, it was very funny. Yeah, yes. I, I'm, I'm a funny person, by the way. Uh, we have Fate Tectonics, which is build up a world piece by piece using the power of the godlike fates while keeping him happy enough to avoid world-shattering temper tantrums. This looks casual, is what I would have described it as. This looks like it might have had origins on a mobile format. But I have no idea what the heck is going on. You play some sort of world terraforming things with powers and changing terrain. But I don't know what's happening. They're the goldfish wearing boots. There, there, there is a goldfish, yes. I'll grant you that. And it's a very, very, very large goldfish. Or maybe, maybe the goldfish is regular size, and the world <laughs> is just really, really tiny. Mind blown. Mind blown. Yep, indeed. That's fake tectonics. Giant goldfish, or maybe small worlds. <laughs> Who knows? Who could possibly ever know? Tulkus knows. Tulkus knows. Ooh, and I'm not gonna say, yo. <laughs> He will take it to his grave with him. <laughs> <laughs> it's, 
Impulse Revolution is a frantic physics-based racing game with an emphasis on local multiplayer. There's a lot of these on Steam lately. People who are putting local multiplayer titles out to an audience that doesn't really buy many local multiplayer titles. It's kind of the death knell in a lot of these games. They're great games, they just don't have the ability oh, yeah, yeah, to yeah. work with a global audience. Yeah, if, you, if you're releasing a multiplayer game on PC, it kind of needs to be online because that audience... It, that audience may change with the launch of Steam machines, but right now, most of those people are looking for something that they can play in front of their computers, not with other people next to them in meat well, space. I mean, the big thing, though, that, like, tr making something online is just, you know... So much more difficult and such oh, a massive no, no, resource. Yeah, no, I, I, I grant you that. I'm aware it's ridiculously difficult to make that work, but the fact is that if you don't have that feature, you are going to sell next to no copies because the audience for your game isn't there. You are on the wrong platform to be selling your game. You want to be on Xbox or PlayStation, really, if you want to sell local multiplayer or something. True, true. So, yeah, Impulse Revolution. Local, four-player local multiplayer. Cross of the Dutchman, an adventure game based on the true story of the folk legend Pierre Gerlof's Donia. I don't know if I sp pronounced that right, but sure. The um, story takes place in medieval Western Europe in the province of Frisia near the turn of the 16th century. It is a game about a Dutchman. I don't know. I can't make out much of what's going on there. Action Only Dutchman adventure. that matters is a flying one. Yeah. Action adventure fighting y RPG ish thingy with a Dutchman. Cool. Dropsy is a non traditional take on the classic point and click adventure. Oh, I've seen or heard of this at some point recently. This is weird. You play like the clown, I think, and the clown goes on to this weird and surreal adventure, and it looks really, really, really strange. Oh, ho, 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 ho. Hey, Al Aldereth, make your creepy baby sound. <coughs> yeah, that's basically what this game is. Now, was Aldereth making that sound, or does he have a thing that makes the sound for him? Because... I don't know I which of those is. Th th these are all creepy options. <laughs> well, it kind of evolves from Gollum. And it. Right. But yes, yeah, Dropsy. Um, it's it's basically that sound embodied yeah. in a point-and-click adventure. Very apt. That's absolutely beautiful. Mm hmm. Uh, we have Queen's Quest: Tower of Darkness, which. Is We're also a point and click die. adventure. No, not even a point. Uh, sorry, a hidden object game. This one, actually, this this one might be entirely hidden object game. There Please are no puzzles to be had. Banks. Yep, that's all hidden objects. If you like finding things, great. You can find the things in the tower. You can find things to your heart's content. Uh, but it says defeat the sorcerer and save your daughter, and will have the daughter. So I feel like people can really identify with the narrative. <laughs> I don't know how you're going to save your daughter by finding objects in the tower, but sure, why not? No, I, I, and her will is able to, you know, your this daughter could be one of the objects. To really <laughs> oh, found her, let's go home. <laughs> really there you are, under that pile of random the, crap. Uh, <laughs> defeating the sorcerer. I imagine you have a lot of sorcerers in England. I, it's probably I, a very I English identify thing. with that wholeheartedly. I beat up sorcerers on a daily basis, in fact. Because that's the English way. Mm, heretics. Uh, we have Nortrian Reawakening. Play with gravity to guide Nort through a mysterious underground world. Oh god, is this a, is this a gravity-based puzzle platformery thing then, isn't it? Like all of the other gra gravity-based puzzle platformery things that are out at the minute. God damn it, this is the other flavor of the month. Gravity. Yep. Play with gravity. And it's also got the silhouette -y thing that all indie games are obligated to have at the minute as well. I just have to say... Gravity's involved, they just need to drop it. It, it, it. It's gravity platforming limbo, is what it is. <laughs> yep. Uh, Ravenmark, Scourge of Estelion, is a turn-based war game with strategic troop placement, and this is one of many choices you face while fighting your way through your many battles. This is a 
Yep, isometric turn-based strategy thingy. That's interesting. It's it's like, huh? I'm not it's sure like what to how? make of. I'm not sure what to make of this actually. It looks like it might be either really, really good or really, really bad. Looks like Heroes of Westmarch or whatever it was. Wesnoth or something like that. Oh, uh, Wesnoth rings a bell, but I don't know much. Something like that. I just think it looks like a tacticsy kind of thing, which I don't necessarily object to, but cool. I don't mind tactics games. No. That covers some of them. <laughs> Happy I... Eldrath, yay! Don't they, they? They do require a lot of time investment, so I tend to. Prefer, I prefer to spend my time fishing instead. But hey, the amount of time I spent fishing, I could have probably invested into something like Final Fantasy Thirteen and actually finished that thing by now. But hey, or, never mind. Or you could play Nat Pagel, let him catch the fish for you. If only that worked. Yeah, it, well, it's, he used to be a viable card, you know. So someday Nat Pagel will live again. Also, he can't catch me a 925 XP striped bass no, or pike or whatever but he the can, heck it was. No, but he can catch you a death wing. Well, yeah, that's that's always fun, I suppose. Yeah, yeah, death wing. You think about that. But he won't level me up in fishing plants, and that's all I care about. He'll level you up in... Okay, I guess. At any rate, we shall finish up this week with Wonder Cat Adventures, a thrilling one-finger runner platformer with a twist of reflection. Reflexion? How do you, I would say reflection, but reflection is something entirely else. So reflexion, is that a word? Does that word exist? Are they making up words? They're making up words. Cool. Uh, help Wonder Cat come home through five worlds, 50 handmade levels, and five giant bosses. Collect the glowing stones to unlock secret levels and extra achievements. No, it's actually a word. <laughs> okay. The act of reflecting. I think this is a mobile port of an endless runnery type thing. That doesn't look the most compelling thing I've ever seen. The character looks like Derple Zork from um, Awesome Noughts. It's like a weird creature in a big walking tank thing. I guess, I guess the creature is the cat, but from the screenshots, it's very hard to make out what the creature is in it. But yeah, it's a cat in a tank, sure. Durple more shot cats as his ammunition, but hey. That's neither here nor there. It is definitely a mobile port, because Touch Arcade gave it 4.5 out of 5. Perfection. 4.5 out of 5 kind of implies it's not perfect, but hey. I think they, wanted, I think they were just going for the pun more than anything else. Anyway, that's that's uh, kind of wraps things up on that particular note. Um, all that remains is for Tulkus and Alzarath to tell us their things. Alzarath, as I guessed, tell us uh, what you do and where people can find it. I do trading card games, strategy games, indie games. I do reviews, let's plays. You name it. If it's gaming, it's on my channel. Usually, I play first-person shooters sometimes. You can find me at youtube.com slash Alzarath, A-L-Z-O-R-A-T-H, or on Twitter, same thing, or on Facebook at LP Alzarath, or Alzarath LP, I forget which. Cool. Well, that helps people find it. <laughs> it's in a you link two in my choices. videos. 50-50. All right. Uh, talk us. Tell the but Alzarath do. doesn't have Strangelands or Hearthstone or Sith Hive on his channel, so he is lacking. I actually regard. do have Hearthstone on my channel. Yeah, but not not recently. No. No, because Hearthstone OP. OP, OP, OP. Best game in A or something. Um, yeah, Tolkis. Um, if you would like to uh, show your displeasure at Maroka for stealing my quartz, then you sub can subscribe to me at youtube.com slash Tolkis Valiant. And we, uh, every subscriber I get tomorrow, we'll, we'll, we'll see that it came, came down to y'all getting mad at Maroka for stealing my quartz. Yeah, hashtag quartz has the rights to or something. And I do not much, really. Um, I have GeoGuessr and Town of Salem. So if you like crappy, well, if you like browser-based games, they're not crappy, but if you like browser-based games and stuff like that, then I guess I'm your man. Um, if you want to yeah. steal more of my subscribers, you can tell them you're going to be doing Spiral Knights soon. Well, I, I will, in fact, be doing... 
I'm, I'm not sure, like, if I'm actually going to be doing Spiral Nights or if that'll just be on your channel. I suppose if we do live stream Spiral Nights regularly, then I might as well set up my own YouTube streaming, although that will be an ordeal for me to figure out. Yeah, maybe someday, at some point, somehow, I will do Spiral Nights, and that day will be a good day, I guess. Yay! I need to look at Spiral Nights. I, I haven't actually gotten to really try it in depth. Well, you're getting in while, you know, it's at its peak of popularity here right now. <laughs> Not quite, but yeah. Yes, bring more people into the game. That's fun. That works. We need needs more players. Come play. Okay. Anyway, uh, if that's all the things, Will, um, what's going on? Hold on. Uh, well, uh, we'll start with the Facebook page, I guess. Sure. Uh, that would be facebook.com forward slash button mash. And the Twitters? Twitter.com forward slash button underscore mash underscore UK. And the Steam curation page? Uh, Bits.ly forward slash BM Steam. Should we mention the website? Uh, we guess we should, yeah, okay. Uh, <laughs> button hyphen mash.net. I don't, has, not that I've looked at it, I have a feeling Sunil might have done something with it. Ooh. Only in so far as yes, if you go yes, if you go on to button-mash.net, it does mention the upcoming event Excellent. on the front page. It still also links to Clockworks for Charity, which was two thousand and something <laughs> now. Um, <laughs> yeah, that was two years ago now. Clockworks for Charity, and the domain name doesn't exist anymore, so oh, I should probably delete that page. But hey, uh, yeah, that's there. That tells you what's going down. It's um, since we never did get to do that segue earlier, we should probably. Say, I was hey, going. I yes. was going to say we should probably talk about the pirates now. We could probably mention that because it is close to International Talk Like a Pirate Day, we have gone with a pirate theme, which is ma mainly just an excuse for me to dress up as a pirate. Like you needed it. Okay, I kind of don't need an excuse, <laughs> no, but um, yeah, I mean, I would like, I, I would one day like to actually uh, make get off my ass and make an actual Guybrush Three Pud cosplay, but <laughs> I don't think this is going to be the time. Uh... Also, I don't, I don't have the skills and dexterity and crafty aptitude to do such a thing really i'm i'm going to be doing a bastions the kid uh costume for uh halloween this year okay cool that's neither here nor there right fair enough uh so yes if you want pirates and or video games if not both then come down and we also we've drafted up a we'll be doing a video game pub quiz stroke trivia so whatever I believe it's known as trivia in other countries. We just call it a pub quiz in our country. Foreigners. I know, right? With our strange ways, our, our pub quizzes. Your Eastern culture. The thing is, other countries don't really seem to get pubs in the same way that we do. You no. just get bars. You don't, have, I, you don't get a pub. I'm down with that. You, you're missing out, man. You don't even drink. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That, that's, that's one thing I don't like about the, the East, you know, all these pubs anywhere. You have to experience culture, you have to do it inside a pub, and I don't like that, man. I, I find it, place to be. I find it an no. intriguing thought that Tolkis is of legal age to drink here, but not in the US. It's a weird yeah. one, isn't it? <laughs> uh, have we got anything else that we're doing other than pirate video games? Not We're not uh, pirating video games, but pirates and video yeah. games. <laughs> <laughs> Make it... Rated R. <laughs> uh, that's probably all we're doing, is it? Um, well, we should we... probably tell people to throw money at you as well for your Patreon. Oh, the Patreon thing, yes. Uh, Patreon.com forward slash button mash is where you can go subscribe to my video content with your monies, and I will make extra videos, which will also be pirate themed because I'm still playing through Tales of Monkey Island at the minute. <laughs> Yay! Um, in my weird quirky way that I do. And we also don't stream on Twitch anymore because we're streaming occasionally on rare occasions on YouTubes. Although I know, I really feel like I need to stream on Twitch for Party Hard because it's got the Twitch integration so the Twitch chat can summon uh. Sharknados and things. <laughs> so I might do a Twitch stream for that just because, but we'll see. Well, where can people find that Twitch? Twitch.tv forward slash button underscore mash. Excellent. So that's cool. All right, that's that's just about all for us. So thank you for joining us, Alroth. Thank you for having me. 
And thank you, as always, to Will and Tolkus. Thank you. Yay! And Michael. Michael was here. My, Michael was here, and he went the way of his namesake. Well, yeah. Vanished under mysterious circumstances. But we thank him for <laughs> that totally time didn't that turn him into glue. <laughs> and, and, and I thank him because I, He's I the have glue that holds us together. Here. <laughs> all the authorities. <laughs> hey, everybody. I think that's all for us this week. So thank you for joining us, and we'll see you next time. Bye. Yes. Bye. Bye.